Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, I'm doing it straight this week, Mason. I'm shooting you straight. It's my co-host, Nick Mason. It's great to be here. Are you also shooting it straight this yeah, week? Yeah, I'm a straight shooter. Pachow, pachow. That was a bit crooked, Mason. Yeah. And they're pointed in different directions. They are pointed in different directions. <laughs> I do have two finger guns, and they are. One's pointed sort of roughly into the ceiling. Yep. And one's... Into the the sort of the audio baffling over there on the wall there. It looks like you're killing a man and you're mm-hmm. killing his pet bird. Or I'm killing a man and I'm killing God. <laughs> so the man I've killed can't go to heaven. <laughs> what do you think about that? I'm a big fan. Yeah. The ultimate revenge. <laughs> oh my God. Am I seeking revenge on God? No, no, the man. Oh, okay, sure. God's just, he's, you know, right, it's, okay. it's part of the plan, mm, you yeah. know? Oh, I should stress both of those were an accident. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, I was just cleaning them and they both went off. <laughs> this is not what this podcast is <laughs> Absolutely about. Absolutely not. Yeah. We do the movie news of the week mm-hmm. and then we do a topic. Yeah. And there's a bunch of big topics this week. I'm loopy, by the way, because I, I mentioned uh, to you earlier, I finished work at 3.30 a.m. Yeah. this morning, but we daylight savings started or possibly ended, so it was actually 4.30 in the morning. Uh, so I'm, yeah. You're knackered, mate. I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. And it's the end. Which is either, it's either going to result in a good episode or an episode where you go, here's the news of the week and this happened and this and they're developing a new movie. And I'll be like, that's great, man. That's cool. And then you're like, oh, no, I've shot a man again. And, and God, <laughs> so I've done it again. Yeah. Theatre school holidays for me, so I'm feeling very similar, Mason. Mm. I'll tell you that much. Uh, so this is the news of the week. Uh, Collings puts time codes below if you don't jump to anything. Star Trek update, Because you have Mason. to go back to school. No, Rodney Mason. Rodney Dangerfield No, style. Mason. No, Mason. You're one of those, you've squeezed into one of those little desks. <laughs> I get squeezed into one of those desks. I like how I didn't even go Adam Sandler. My reference is the Rodney Dangerfield movie, Back to School. A movie you've probably never I've seen. I've seen it. A friend okay, of mine, right. a friend of ours actually really loved that movie. Nobody believes that, and like, it's, like we'd go and we'd have a night at his house and he'd be like, let's watch Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School. Because <laughs> it's got um, that, that comedian who's always yelling. You know that guy? Um, he's from Police Academy? No, um, that's Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. You're thinking of a different guy. I'll look him up, but you Please do. do the news of the week. Uh, then and got, I'll say yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. New Planet of the Apes stuff. That's right. Trailers Ahoy for The Last of Us. <laughs> uh, we've got some deep fake news for a couple of actors, which I want to get into. Uh-oh. Very spooky stuff. Uh, the verdict, it seems the early verdict for Werewolf by Night yeah. is coming. And it's, and a, a, it's not looking good for my scoop, Mason, I'll tell you that That's right. Much. And yeah. a rumoured verdict... For the yet-to-be-filmed Blade in a similar vein. Oh, I'm going to get into that, yeah. Yeah, So uh, that on top of recasting of General Ross, Mm. Armor Wars, Blade, as you mentioned, and then, of course, the big news of the week is that Hugh Jackman is Backman (laughs) as uh, Deadfall. That's right. Backman Turner Overdrive. So we're going to They're doing the Backman Turner Overdrive biopic. You better believe it. Mm. And then, of course. And he's Hal Backman. Oh, that's Tal good. Backman? Tal Backman. Was Tal his name. Backman. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. And then I want to talk about uh, I've done a bunch of research this week on actors who said they'd never return to a role. That's right. And then how much money they took for coming back to that role. And how much money they took or how much spite they had to expend? It's both. It's some often of both. Them, some of them was like, no, I, I'm, I'm pretending I like this. Mm. That's peppered among it, but yeah, it's mostly right. spite and money. Mm. And I love that. That's right. Yeah. That sticky, icky, cashy. Anyway, who's the yelling comedian? The yelling comedian is Sam Kinison. Oh, of him? course. Yeah, but yeah, also yeah. Robert Downey Jr. is in that movie. Is he? Says, says that here, unless Google's lying to me. It is. Which they do for that sticky, icky, cashy. Oh, my goodness, so, Mason. Yeah. Now, this first story is via Variety, uh, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> So Star Trek 4. We'll see. Star Trek 4, Mason. Mm, New Star Trek 4. That's right. So that's in the Abrams-averse, the Kelvin timeline, Mm. if you will, the Chris Pine-averse. Yes. That has been pulled, not surprisingly. Named after Kelvin McAllister, the lead character from Home Alone. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, Or Kelvin, the the ship to shore. We're doing too many riffs, Mason. We're doing too many riffs and we need to get on with this. All right, right? fine. All right. I mean, I loved my ship to shore riff, but I'm going to have to. That's (laughs) great. I feel we didn't dwell enough in the ship to shore riff. I think you just said it and you moved on. (laughs) And I think we we should be more time. You could have have done the theme. I could have. Do you want to do a little bit? Just now. That's enough. Okay. It's enough riffing. But that we, wasn't a V-show. But to be clear, we know the rest. Yes, we do. Uh, so it's been pulled from the 2023 schedule. Not surprising because, of course, Matt Shackman, he left that project to work on Fantastic Four. 
I do think there's a possibility, though, mm-hmm. seeing as he, he left, that maybe J.J. Abrams is about to get fired from Warner Brothers like everybody else mm. and he's going to make a triumphant return to Star Trek, which everybody would love. Maybe. Because the studio would go like, what was our biggest one? It's probably 2009, I assume. Yeah, the first one, right? Uh, yeah. Probably not adjusted for inflation, but mm. I would say as in terms of raw data. I think so. There'd be a big enough data. There'd be a big enough. No- oh, there'd be yeah. a big enough number there mm. uh, to, to for them to be impressed and go, yeah, we could do with another of those big numbers. Thank you. Do you think it would be worth maybe making a movie around the stuff that people like about the new stuff, like doing a Strange New Worlds movie? Uh huh. You know, they're doing like a Cobra Kai. Well, they're doing a new karate community yeah, right, that's not right. related to Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. Is, do you think they should do something like that instead of going back to the well of the old I, I, Yeah, I mean, universe, I, probably, but also I, I feel like. The, the new universe, you know yeah. what I mean. Look, I know, I know we talk about how uh, TV is just like movies these days, but I feel like there is still a stigma of mm, we can't get TV guys. Yeah. I mean, there is precedent in Star Trek for and that. They, they you literally know. did that. They literally yeah. did that, but I don't know if. Well, they did it with. They did it with, you know, original series and the next generation. That's true. They did, yeah, I guess. So, so I, I, you know, in saying that, I guess you're right. It is the only franchise really where they just mm. went, let's do a – And it's, but all, also, but also it's that, all cast. Yeah. It would be cheaper. You get all the creatives involved. Keep, these, keep the sets. Keep the sets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that being said, though – Maybe you could make a new set. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We could destroy an enterprise, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We could true. crash an enterprise, though. Yeah. That being said, though, I feel like – the next gen characters making the jump to the movies was in an era where next gen was a huge hit on TV, and even people who didn't really know Star Trek were like, "Oh yeah, okay, that, that's a big hit on TV. I and know about that." Transition from old Trek to new, yeah. As well. But this yeah. is kind of there's so many options now. I yeah. think if you were like Star Trek: Strange New Worlds, people would go, "Okay, is this the JJ Abrams one, or is yeah. this is this Kirk again?" You'd have to be like, "No, it's on." Paramount, Paramount Plus, or whatever. maybe or another channel. Yeah. Maybe it's on Hulu or something. Whereas, suppose they could go like. Chris Pine is, tra- is teaming up with Chris Pratt, which is one of the ideas. Mm. Not Chris Pratt. No, no, Chris, Chris Pine and Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah, what Pratt. doesn't matter? Two yeah. Chris's. <laughs> we've rolled the dice. We've, we've got a two three- Chris's. <laughs> is That's that anything? Good. Yes, two Chris's. That's good. <laughs> That's good with the brains pumping. Good, good. This try. is how we do this. Yeah. A spin doctor's reference. <laughs> so, so for those who probably remember or vaguely Pocket full remember, of kryptonite, their you. big hit album. Chris, po- uh, Chris Hemsworth played Chris Pine. Pines Kirk's father in the original Star That's Trek. That's correct, yes. And there was an idea to bring them together in a timeline thing. Yes. And I think with name recognition alone, I yep. think that could do really well, but that would cost a lot. Chris Pine riding high of, high of course off Don't Worry Darling. Don't even worry, babe. That's right. It's called in Australia. <laughs> She'll be right, babe. Mm. Yeah. I feel I've done She'll Be Apples quite recently, so I'm not going to do it You're again. You're not going to do it again? I'm not going to do it again, yeah. Yeah, great. Terrific. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I need to actually get caught up on all my track. Actually, I've been watching um, Lower Decks, Lower Decks, which is thrilling. So I'm really enjoying that. Uh, Mason, you might have seen the imagery this week for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, a piece of concept. Yeah, I did say it that. Said yes. something like 500 years after the last uh, okay. production on this begins next month from director Wes Ball, who did the Maze Runner trilogy, Ooh. which I watched the first one and I'm like, oh, that was pretty good. I like that. I all think, right, I, think all I like right. that one. Mm-hmm. So it's going to pick up many years after the end of 2017's War for the Planet of the Apes. That's very interesting because if the, the last piece of Planet of the Apes news I remember Detritus. hearing about was that the the next Planet of the Apes movie was going to be a reboot yet again. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. So um, it, it was going to be like, okay, we're just we're just going to do another planet. It was, it was going to be unconnected to the previous ones, but it turns out – uh, they know what side their bread's buttered on and they know that people like those previous ones and they think, well, let's do a sequel. I'm really glad they went in that direction. Also, it may as well be a reboot. It's 500 years in the future. Yes, Who exactly. Cares, yeah. right? So all the, all the characters we know and love, most of them died in the previous movies and that, that – Koba fell down a big shaft. Do you remember that? He fell down a thing yeah, he went, and he exploded. Ah, um, somebody catch me. So all the all the apes we know from the previous movies are dead. Yes. Uh, unless they've found the fountain of youth. Unless no, it's and, also a universe in which there is a fountain of youth. Spoiler alert, like Caesar dies, doesn't he, in the last one? Yes. Five years old at this point. Well, I could spoil that, right? <laughs> I think so. I mean, and he would be dead anyway. Yes, because, because of the 500 years. 500 years or whatever. Unless they're, once again, the fountain of youth or mm-hmm. something in their genetics enables them to live 500 years. Et cetera and so forth. Yeah. Um, these are... These are great. They are great. So more please. Matt Reeves directed two of the last three. How do you feel about the name Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? What would you prefer? Um, A bunch of apes mucking about. (laughs) But they're smart. Brackets, but they're smart apes. Extra brackets. I'm extending that. Yes, go on. They're flinging poo. Whoa. (laughs) 
There's some things that are innate, wow. you know? It's I, a yeah, metaphor. I, I was thinking they'd be flinging Proust because they're so... <laughs> What's Proust? You know, the Marcel Proust, the author. Because <laughs> they're very... Uh, yeah. they're, they're very. They can read? Well, I mean, 500 years. So yeah, it's to, true, to say yeah. what they can do. They're probably caught up on all sorts of They're Marcel flinging Proust. riffs. They could be flinging riffs 500 they years They probably should, couldn't they? <laughs> that just happened, they'd say. <laughs> flying, throwing poo at each <laughs> other and yeah. Proust. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the future... Go on. Trailers of Hoy Mason for The <laughs> Last of Us. Mm. Last of Us has a brand new trailer. That's right. Uh, it looks very much like the game. It's got, of yeah. course, the Mandalorian himself and the little the little girl from Game of Thrones who was mean. A human Grogu. That's right. <laughs> a human Grogu. That's yeah. really good. All his future castmates will be compared to Grogu or not Grogu. A hundred percent. You are right. Yes. What did you think of this trailer? If you did indeed, I watch didn't. It? I did watch it. It looks. It looks. Uh, it looks expensive. It looks expensive. It looks suitably dreary and sad, which yeah. is the Last of Us universe. We've got to look at the clickers, the, yeah, the very humans good, yeah. that are sort of infected with that zombie fungal disease. Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman is in this. Yes. Yeah. So it's um, apparently it's going to adhere pretty closely to the the games. The the creator behind the game is also heavily involved in the series. Mm. I'm interested to see like what could it do, like if it's just doing the games. What why would What's good? What's diff? What's good about it? Like in addition yeah. to, mm. uh, but it honestly it looks really great. Other it? cast members include uh, Gabriel Luna's in it. Oh, he's good. And a Torv, who you might know from uh, the uh, TV series Fringe. I've never seen Fringe. Uh, the show and uh, says you. That's it. Says that's you. all the people. Uh, oh, and Melanie Linsky, of course, who's in uh, Yellow Jackets. Oh, I like the yellow. Yeah. I watched yeah. that both seasons that mm. are currently out. Very good. Uh, that's going to be out sometime in 2023. I would say probably in the first half if they've. Releasing a trailer for it, yes. I'd imagine. But uh, that's very exciting, and we will watch it when it comes out, won't we, Mason? We will watch or we it. we forget because we're swamped with content. This is why I've uh, vanished. We're not swamped with good content, though, generally no, no. speaking. Okay. Well, something, there's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some good stuff, Mason. Name one thing, perhaps in the next bit of news. Vanity Fair. Here we go. James L. Jones has a fi- <laughs> wonderful magazine. I agree. Has officially retired as Darth Vader. Now, his last actual vocal performance that he did in studio mm-hmm. was for Tross. The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, yes, that's right. He does a little voice cameo at the start mm. where, he, where he tells Kylo Ren that the voice that he's been hearing that was Darth Vader was actually the Emperor. He was doing it from a big spider chair or whatever. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh-huh. The, yeah. But the, 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 um, the Darth Vader voice we heard in Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi, mm-hmm. was used, built Ken- using the same technology that they used to make Mark Hamill's voice Correct. in The Mandalorian, i.e., they got enough samples of his voice that they could build an algorithm. Yes. And the algorithm has. Uh, has Doing all the work now. That's right. So apparently they presented Jones, with, he's 91, by the way, with uh, Reese Beach's work. He's looking great. Is he? I haven't seen him in a long time. <laughs> Presumably. He's... he's still looking, you know, glossy and black and he's got the uh, thing true, on his yeah. chest. And... He can really swing that lightsaber. Right? Yeah, that's no, right. right. Yeah. So he's still doing the body, is he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was he ever? He never did no, the body. No, he never did, no? yeah. Okay. That was David Browse initially and it's been multiple, like, stunt people ever mm. since and whatever, including Hayden Christensen, one of them more recently. Mm. So the actor signed off on using his... Uh, archival voice recordings to keep Darth Vader alive and vital, even by art- artificial means. So, did you say artificial means? Means. Okay. So, oh, he's more machine than man, etc. Oh, yeah, 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 I saw yeah, that nice. a few times this week, and I went very good. I will steal that for the show. And then <laughs> very I'll get, good. And then Mason will say, "Well, kudos me live finally." Big time kudos for you, James. That's what I thought. This has gone <laughs> very well for very me. Very well. Uh, <laughs> On your thievery. <laughs> So turned it around. I read an article where this came from as well that there was a guy called Bogdan Baliev, right and now. he actually, I agree, he was the one who actually did the re-speech of work for Darth Vader for Kenobi as they were being invaded. So he's like, I better get this done. Oh, like in Ukraine. There's a big invasion happening oh, boy. right now, but I've got this deadline and it's <laughs> Disney. If, if the Russians don't kill me, Disney will. Wow. So that's fascinating. Yeah. Um, now, how do you feel about this, though? Like, oh, actually, before I do that, let's uh-huh. get into this, actually. So the Telegraph reported that Bruce Willis has become the first Hollywood star to sell his rights for a digital twin of himself to be created for use on screen via a company called Deep Cake. Yeah. Now, in a deep state- Cake. Yes. <laughs> like oh. a deep cake. Yes. No, I'm... Like it's narrow. I'm visualizing you put your it hand right. Right. You can't yeah. touch the bottom of the cake. That's a deep cake. I agree. Wow. And you're like, maybe there's a little present or something in the bottom, but you don't know because the cake's so it's too deep. too deep. Wow. Yeah, you get a... You get like an umbrella. You try to reach the bottom, but you can't. Do you think maybe they started as like a pornographic company somehow? 
feels like I a name. Know, I mean, that feels like a like a it does, like a vaguely adult entertainment themed name somehow. Not many things pivot out of pornography. Right, sure, sure. More things yeah. pivot in. <laughs> I guess that's probably. It does happen. Don't mm. get me wrong. You might yeah. get like an actor coming over to the mainstream yeah. every now and then. But mm. yeah, interesting interesting theory. In the number though. Uh, so in a statement on its website, Willis says, I liked the precision with which my character turned out. It's a mini movie in my usual action comedy genre. For me, it's a great opportunity to go back in time. Now, of course, he was recently diagnosed, though this has been for a while, with uh, aphasia, yeah. which affects your speech and understanding of speech, and that's why he's been doing all of these movies to make a bunch of money, presumably for his family, mm. um, before his retirement, which mm. he, I think he has retired by, by now. His family or a fleet of Ferraris. Exactly. But the thing is... Wouldn't begrudge him either. No, absolutely not. Yeah, do what you want. You've got to get one in every colour. I agree. Children. <laughs> so this, though, yeah. isn't true. So oh. Bruce Willis's rep told Yahoo Entertainment, which also sounds that this isn't true, mm. uh, that he has no... Also started out as an adult entertainment company. Yahoo! Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, as no, They said he has no partnership or agreement with this company. Mm. And then Deep Cake confirmed this. So I went to their website. Oh. So there's a mo- they're saying there's a movie. They're, they're saying- no, no, they so- they're saying this website said they sold the rights. Right. But, they, but, but the, the statement that was allegedly from Bruce Willis there that turns out not to be real. Well, I he's, think- he's saying there's a movie involved and it looks like me and it's back no, no. to him. Okay. What I think happened, I even went back on the Wayback Machine. Mm-hmm. I think somebody at this company, or maybe they had it on their website and they removed it and I couldn't find it. Yeah. They did that weird Russian commercial with deep fake Bruce Willis. Oh, right. And if you go to the website, it's just that. It's like, what celebrities do you want to see? Oh. Who have we got working for us? And it's just like we did like a Bruce Willis oh, commercial. Okay, right. And then they're like, who do you want to see? Tell us. Is it Bruce Willis? Because we've got Bruce Willis. <laughs> well, we don't actually have him. Do, we you, did it. Do, you, do you want any kind of American 80s action superstar? <laughs> a gruff one? He's bald? He's in Die Hard? We've got Bruce Willis. As luck would have it. Bruce Willis. Oh, wait, we don't. We don't have it anymore. He sued us. So, yeah. So that's what's going on here. Hmm. So, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if this is though it becomes more commonplace. I, I feel more okay with James L. Jones doing it mm-hmm. than someone who has asphasia mm. selling their digital likeness. Yeah. And it's the same with like with dead actors. Like how does that, like I know the family. But can, to, be, to be clear, he, he hasn't. He hasn't. Sold, he no, hasn't no sold but I'm saying it, if okay. it did, but like, yep. but we've seen it. Like Tarkin came back. It's true. The family estate. Mm-hmm. With, uh, the, when it happened with Princess Leia, the first time she was alive for Rogue One mm. and then not for the second time because her daughter gave. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, who am I to say? If your daughter says you can be in Star Wars or whatever, well, it's nothing to do with me. But this is very <laughs> shaky territory. Isn't it though? Yeah. 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 Um, do, you, do you think that this is maybe potentially this company? Do, does it seem like they have the technology here? Does yeah, it seem like done. it's functional and working? Yeah. And looks pretty good. I mean, anybody can do it. With yeah. The, like, there's a lot of – literally anybody can use there's this an technology. Apparently, there's right. an app and whatever and there's varying degrees of how to – but it's it's mm. essentially – it's a pretty simple process if you put the time into it yeah. of uploading the various imagery. Right, right, right. I mean this is certainly this, – this seems like it's a, uh, it's a it's a PR win for these guys yeah. in the sense that now everybody knows Deep Cake is out there and they're providing deep fakes and delightful birthday treats. That you cannot reach at the bottom of it. Can't reach the, the bottom of it, you know. Yeah. Anyways, for shame – uh, the Telegraph. The deepest donut you'll ever see. <laughs> just very narrow. Just the hole and you put your hand in the no, hole? No, it's a hot jam donut, oh, but it's no. very deep. Oh, I would love So that. you have to make your own hole. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. Does it get cold as it go down? No, hotter. Oh, no. But you're like, maybe there's a price at the bottom, so you've got to keep digging. But you don't know. No. Yeah. Anyways, a full shame on The Telegraph for putting that story out there and getting it wrong. You've really tarnished your reputation, The Telegraph. <laughs> anyway, speaking of, uh, we had, me, I should say specifically, had a scoop a few weeks back that Werewolf by Night had been cut down to like 30 minutes because mm. it wasn't very good. Yeah. Uh, and the actor didn't. And want I it. said, or at least I thought, mm. just put a different guy in the suit. <laughs> and look, I actually forgot to reach out to the source to do it this week who told me that uh, to find out whether. To berate of, them. Yeah, to berate them and be like, you look like, made me look like a right prat. <laughs> it's fine. I actually don't mind. Because, Mason, I am a right prat. Uh, but anyway, so the reviews have come out, mm-hmm. and it's fifty-two minutes, so yep. it's like a, so. This was screen somewhere. Some sc- some screeners went out. Okay, right, right. Uh, and it's currently sitting at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty good. And as we know, people who get early advanced screenings of things, they're always they're they're just they're really on the level. Those guys. I will say this: it's not bad news. Yeah. 
So, but we'll find out what's actually kind of going on later in the yes, week. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and then it's coming out very soon. It's coming on the seventh, so we'll Ooh, be talking about it next week. So nice. apparently, it's gory and like a really cool throwback and spooky and fun mm. and all of those things. So right. I, I mean, it looks different. I would love it if this was great. I mean, I'd love it if it was bad. Then I'd be validated. <laughs> sure, I'd love sure. it either way. Yeah, yeah. You would love it if the the lead actor. There's literally a scene where he takes the werewolf mask off and he's like, "This sucks and it's hot and uncomfortable in here, <laughs> and I shan't be doing the rest of it." And that's why the rest of it is bad. <laughs> Exactly. Anyway, sometimes we get... You could get that deep fake, James. I could. You could talk to deep cake. Yeah. Fix it. Make me look better. Anyway, we do sometimes get things right. It's true. And we got this one thing wrong. We, collectively. Oh, man. (laughs) Never should have signed that contract. (laughs) Here we go, Mason. Mm. William Hurt died. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. That's not not recent news. Nah, he was 72. Yeah. He had cancer and he died. Mm. Jeff Snyder, though. Said re- this recently. Uh, he's a entertainment reporter and whatnot. Terrific. Uh, he's been not a- just your mate. No, this no. isn't your your uh, source who's alive. No, this is him. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. So <laughs> you're no, outing him now. No, it's not him. Uh, he said this via the Hot Mike podcast. Ooh. He said though Marvel insiders deny he has been cast in the movie at uh, this time, multiple sources indicate that Harrison Ford either is or was the studio, or isn't <laughs> was the studio's top choice huh. to star in Thunderbolts as General Ross himself. Wow. It's unclear whether he has already passed. I feel like you can recast. Yes, you General can. Ross. Of course, we had uh, previous movies. We had Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott was was the original. Wait. No, he was in the Zangley. Yeah, Zangley's yeah. so. But would that uh, be confusing though for people? No, no, no. For people to watch now. I mean, they did. I mean, they re, you know they recast they recast Rhodey and they did it with one line. But that was of course before. That was also racism because <laughs> the guy who did it was like no people one will, will notice. notice. Yeah, no, that's true. No, no one but, will notice. Yeah, yeah. But that's but the, but you know they 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 did it literally with a line. It's me. Get over it, kind of thing. And that's people true. Did. But that is years before people got mad at everything. So yeah. I mean, uh, they, they could also bring in, like, a different... Guy with a moustache. Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of, like, there's a bunch Mario, of... Mario. Mario, of, of the Super Mario fame. Exactly. Oh, we've got to get it a Hulk. <laughs> He's sad also. Why? <laughs> I, I, I work it too hard. I leave my wife at home. Oh, no. I've got to get her the Hulk, but it take up all of my time. Peach, you're, like, a different woman. Yeah, a, re- a real human woman. You're married to a human woman. Yes. Why are you rescuing the princess, though? What's that about? I mean, it's a good deed. Yeah, yeah, But why yeah. is that specifically the only specific deed that you do? Oh. You could do like another. I mean, you're doing the Thunderbolts, I guess. Yes, that's true. It's two things. Yes. People are like, hey, Mario, why are you always doing that one thing? And he's like, I'm going to make a, I'm gonna make a super villain team. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife doesn't get suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> I just see, I, honey, I do all kinds of things. <laughs> this is a dumb show, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> The, my, my, I had a point, but I can't remember what it is now because you made me do that thing with <laughs> Mario of Super Mario Brothers fame where he's a, a computer animated man in the Marvel Universe now, and he, but he's also depressed. Real Mario's depressed. Yeah, and he's married. And, and I think maybe he might bring some of that into the character. Sure. Because his daughter's, you know, estranged from his daughter. That's a good point, actually. And, um, yeah, yeah, okay. You know. This is all great stuff. Yes. Uh, I guess my point was yes. Harrison Ford is 80, and if it's yeah. going to be an ongoing role... He's 80. That's true. And, you know, he'll either not want to do it again or he'll die because he's 80. Um, but then again, recast again. I don't know. Yeah. But also think, like, William Hurt is not recognisable enough in this role to deep fake him. Like, it would yeah, kind of right. be a waste of time, I feel. That's true. I yeah. mean, no offence to William Hurt, but it kind of seems like... I mean, the technology's there, though, so... Well, I was going to say also, maybe, were you going to talk about this? You could just do a different Agent, of Sh- Agent Shield guy and then you said Mario. I did, Like yes. a different, was there a, do you think you have another higher up person? Where were you going with any of that? That is a great question. I, I was just thinking, because this week, of course, we mentioned, you mentioned Werewolf by Night. So for yeah. this week for Caravan of Garbage, we are. Um, no, no, that's going to be the week after. Ah, for, for next week for Caravan yeah. of Garbage, we are watching the Man Thing yeah. 2005 movie. And that got me thinking about Marvel Supernatural stuff. Yeah. And uh, there was a team, there was, a, there was an offshoot of S.H.I.E.L.D. called Stake. Right. In the in, Mar- in the Marvel comic universe, which is like supernatural, it's the supernatural team. Yeah. And one of them was Dum Dum Dugan, but the life model decoy of Dum Dum Dugan. Oh, that's fine. Because he's love dead. That. I love in the, that. In, obviously, in the present day. Yeah. Because he was a World War Two guy. Yeah. But get get um the guy. You know the guy. Dum Dum Dugan. The, the actor who plays him. He also voices the Hulk in some things. So. Yes. Neil McDonough. There we go. Get him. The most Irish name you've ever seen. And you'd be like, "Aren't you dead?" And you'd be like, "I'm a robot." And people'd be like. I guess, we sure. Fine. Yeah. He's a gun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm. Shotgun? Is he a shotgun guy? 
It feels like a shotgun, shotgun guy, doesn't Shotgun bowler it? hat. Yeah, shotgun bowler hat. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, so, yeah, that may or may not be happening. Though. And also, I mean, how much money – we, we, we're going to talk about uh, actors and money momentarily, yeah. but how much money does Harrison Ford want to be this character for one or two movies? Probably a lot. Yeah. You know, you put a name on it, though. Yeah, He's yeah, got Indiana so. Jones coming out. It makes sense. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay, Did yeah. Did you see that leaked trailer, any of it? No. Pretty shit. I also on. didn't see the leaked trailer for Quantum Mania, which is apparently out there. I, that's on Twitter as well. Yeah, yeah I okay. saw it just pop up in my feed. Mm-hmm. There's a deep fake. Well, I'm gonna stop saying. De- there's a de aging. A deep cake. Yes, there's a de aging Indiana Jones bit. It's. Oh. I mean, it's blurry and crooked on a Twitter yeah, video. Yeah. Oh, when so it's 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 a moment where we see him in the past, yeah. like in his prime. That I mean, it's. Incre- I mean, again, it's on. I watched yeah, right. it on my phone, and it's crooked, and somebody filmed yeah. it, and everyone's it's, screaming. It, and somebody's filming it, and there's an Instagram filter over it. Yeah, it's, it's a Unify filter. But just like Jesus yeah. Christ, like mm. it's you could just make movies like that now, and yeah. you should, I mm. guess. Or I'm against it. I yeah. can't remember. Mm. Now, speaking of Herodi, oh, which we were talking about. Herodi, that's right, Herodi. We're wondering, we're wondering what happened with Armor Wars. It just yes. off the slate for a bit. Sure does. Uh oh. The, the dog yeah, is wondering you? what's happening. <laughs> With Armor Wars. Did you even get in, Ollie? Did you pick the lock? Yeah, Better not crafty. have. Better not have picked that bloody lock, Mason. Uh, so what was Disappeared off the slate, Armor Wars. Disappeared it's off the back. slate. We're like, did it get bloody, this TV series. Exactly. We're, we're loving the era of Marvel TV, we said. Mm-hmm. So where it's gone. Great question. Anyway, mm. THRs have confirmed. Yes. And then it was confirmed, I should say, that it is a movie now. My goodness. So Don Cheadle, it's a movie now? It's a movie now? Now look. Good. Mm-hmm. I think Marvel needs time to breathe, and this week to week Marvel stuff yes. is like is it's people like for good or ill are flipping out, and they need to pull back. Let me ask you this, James: Why do you think this decision was made? Do you not think, enough story. Not enough. St- <laughs> that that's an option. Not enough story is is the the one you know based on the previous. Uh, but then again, you might ask yourself. Not enough story hasn't stopped them before, has it? Well, that well maybe they're learning from that. Maybe, maybe they're learning from that. Maybe they think. It's expensive. Yeah. There's going to be a bunch of Iron Man suits in this. Iron Man four. Put it, yeah, yeah, Iron Man four, and then we put we do it in a movie, and then we don't have to have like seven hours of Iron Man suits. Mm, we yeah, can right, compress right. all that into. Yeah, I don't know. I like this though. Yeah, I think more things should be like this, where yeah. they go, "This isn't enough. Let's do a movie." I think yeah, they yeah. should. Maybe we should all take some time off this stuff. You know Mate, what I mean? Why, how dare <laughs> you? How dare People you? People don't get a chance to miss things and like yeah. and be like, remember that? I was like, that actually. That was everyone's sick. constantly like, this yeah. is ruining this and this is why, or this is the best thing and kill yourself. Yeah. You know? Just, <laughs> the, the two states of being that exist. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think you might be right. They might be learning from their mistakes. There's not enough plot to cover that. They might just be, uh, yeah, like they might be like, okay, well, people like Don Cheadle. Mm. It's not, it's not going to be Iron Man four in name, but it essentially is. If Put a bunch of Iron Man in Iron it. Iron Man. Put Iron Man in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but like old footage. Yes, exactly. Um, so the timeline thus far. So we've got, we've got upcoming. We've got. Wakanda Forever, yeah. which we're going to see the debut of Riri Williams as Ironheart. Correct. Which I'm assuming she's going to be like the star pupil of that, like Wakandan outreach. I'm guessing, Science yeah. project that okay, they had yeah. at the end of the first one. Like, cool. like maybe they they went to various places and they're like, this woman's she's a not, genius. Yeah, and, she's not from Wakanda, so that would make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. The Marvels yeah, we'll, see, we'll see, we've got Secret Invasion, yeah. which of course Rhodey's going to be in. Maybe he's a scroll, maybe he's not. Do you want me to check the order of these things? Yeah, if you could check the order. So we've got that. And then we've got the Ironheart TV series. Yeah. And then May, like, and then, then we've got Armor Wars. So here we go. So we've got Black Panther in November. Okay. Then we've got Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Ant-Man. <laughs> February. Ants. Uh, Ants. Then we've got Guardians in Ant-Man. May mm-hmm. and then the Marvels in June. Okay. And then Blade, which we'll talk about. Mm. That might probably not be happening, but that's not including shows. Because yeah. shows, a lot of them don't have dates yet. Yeah, right, so right. So we right. have a rough idea of what's okay. coming next year, but we don't know when. Right. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't shock me at all. In fact, it's. I would say it's pretty much a lock that Ironheart will be in Armor Wars, right? Because his Brody would encounter, would see yeah. Ironheart doing a thing and be like, well, that's obviously stolen Stark technology. Let's do Armor and Wars. And then meet up with her and realise it's not. Mm. And then they team up yeah. to fight everybody else. That would be cool. I'm, I'm excited for maybe the debut of like a Titanium Man or a, yeah, a like Dynamo. The, sure. Mm. There's a bunch of those they could do. Yeah. Or don't do maybe like mm. an armoured suit. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. mean, it's Armored War. Just so. a man on a bicycle. What am I saying? <laughs> this guy's stolen Stark technology. He's got a repulsor-powered bicycle. Can it fly? No. No, you just hit that wall real hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
So there you go. Remember that time Tony Stark hit that wall? Yeah. Well, that? That. But he's not a main character, so he died. <laughs> he just died. It's bad. There we go. Now, this next segment of the show, I've yes. written Blade and then in brackets, oh, no. Mm. A lot of bad you Blade think we, You think there's going to be a regular segment? I hope called not. Called Blade, oh, no. I hope not. Is that people who see Blade, maybe? Yes. Vampires, I'd imagine, mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or racists, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Basim Tarek, mm. uh, who was the director on this. Was? Left. What? But don't worry, he's still going to serve as a producer. Phew. Which means nothing, really. Oh. And the production for this movie, which doesn't currently have a director, starts on October 5th. That's, you might be like. That's this week, I yeah. think. It's interesting. That's in three days. You think we could put our hat in the ring? It's ridiculous. It's October already. It's already the spookiest time mm. of the year. And I'm not just talking about tax time, Mason. He's done it again. They don't have. That reminds me, I've got to do my taxes. <laughs> Uh, they don't, this this is not happening. No. Obviously, no, absolutely not. Unless they meant no, November fifth, which either way, that's not happening mm. either. So this is by a thr. Have you been confused by the fact that October is the tenth month? Do you think maybe that's maybe Mason? I get confused a lot, but uh, I will say this: <laughs> if it's out in November, it has to start now, right? Around now, yeah. Marvel can turn around a movie in a year. They can't turn it around. No. In less than a year, I don't think. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, so THR said, due to continued shifts in our production schedule, sorry, this is an official statement to THR, due to our continued shifts in our production schedule, Bassam is no longer moving forward as director and Blade, uh, Alf Blade, but will remain as an executive producer on the film. We appreciated blah, 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 hard work getting him, et cetera. Mm, sure, uh, sure, so sure. this is also via Jeff Snyder. Oh, yes, your this. mate. I'm told the current Blade script is roughly 90 pages mm-hmm would make it roughly 90, 90 minutes. minutes. Mm. Except a lot of those pages would be like, and then he does a big flip. He does a big flip and they and can't believe sword. it. They look at his None sword. of the vampires or racists can believe he did no, that. No, they go, so oh, good. no, Blade. Blade. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a movie where the bad guys have a catchphrase and Blade does not have a catchphrase. <laughs> and features exa- exactly two mm. lacklustre action sequences. Yeah. Now, I guess we don't – action sequences aren't – Often much in a script, though. It's often That's like, true. and then they he did a big flip and all the flip and yeah. they kicked each other and everyone said no. Uh, what if I mean I've I've literally never seen a Marvel MCU script. Like I've never read one in real life. I'm sure they're available if you want to find yeah, you one. Can but what one. do the action? What do the action it sequences depends. look depends like? Who's doing it? And yeah, right. Whatever, yes. Often it will just be they fight. Or, to, or, yeah. or, they'll, or they'll, some others, I think James Gunn. Like, I was going to say James Gunn, certainly, them out yeah. meticulously. Yeah, I imagine, a, I imagine a James Gunn would do that because he has a certain amount of creative freedom in that way. But yeah. a lot of, a lot of you know, like what we would call like a journeyman directors who are just brought in to do the character mm. stuff, they'd be, they'd be like, we've done all the action sequences already. So. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> um, Herschel, though, of mm-hmm. course, is taking on the role of Blade, is, uh, who was cast, I think, in... Was it 2018 or 2019 he came out on stage? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, said, was said to be very frustrated with the process. Feige is said to be spread too thin, but, hey, that's just what my sources are telling me, don't shoot the messenger. I would have believed that about him being spread too thin. There's Marvel every week. Yeah, there sure is. There's yeah. too much. Mm, yeah. Uh, so, so many, there's only so many times you can swap hats for different you know, aspects properties. of the franchise. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So this is also via Illuminati who oh. said, uh, Bo DeMeo is leading Marvel Studios' efforts to overhaul the movie, starting from scratch and writing a script that is essentially entirely new. DeMeo's work, uh, he's also worked on Moon Knight uh, and essentially the head writer on X-Men 97 and this impressed Kevin Feige and other studio executives. So I'm impressed. Good. I like Aren't this. Aren't you also impressed? Drones? Is, talking to? is the other executives. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're all, yep. Very good, sir. Leading them to go uh, to hand over the raids uh, to rebuild Blade's backstory from the ground up. Now, apparently, this is also a rumor. The original script was set in the 1920s, which I think is where his origin was. Maybe uh, included European vampires. Oh, I love a fancy vampire, right? And I love fancy vampires getting fucking wrecked, mate. <laughs> sure, so this, yeah. I hope this is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also been rumored that the draft of the story features multiple time jumps, uh, so post 1920s. Okay, so you you maybe want a fancy vampire. What sort of vampires do we want? Do we want a vampire that transforms into a bat or do we want a vampire that's just a pale man? They'd be doing vampire blat- bats in um, Blade comics, I assume. Yeah. They'd do all sorts of super your Marvel vamp- Your Marvel vampires can turn into a bat, yep. can turn into a wolf, can turn into a mist. Uh, okay. they, are, they are also vulnerable to silver bullets. Am I vulnerable to that? Yes. It's the silver though, isn't it? It's not the bullet. Yeah, it's the silver man, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that'll upset you. So that's cool. It is cool, I think, yeah. Um, but do we want like... I, I imagine I imagine what we'll get is closer to classic vampires as opposed to like, you know, 
weird freaky vampires that can you know. like in Blade Two, like the yeah, one yeah, the yeah. vampire, the vampire vampires, the vampire vampires. Yeah, yeah. I, I suspect we'll get less of that and more. Yeah, classic vampires going Blair and so forth. Yeah. I would like a mix. This, yeah, I mean, there could this, be different. I mean, obviously, in in the Twilight franchise, we've got vampires from different that's different, true uh, regions, and they had sort of different powers. Some are wolves. Yeah. That is very true. Some of those vampires <laughs> yes. are wolves, if I remember those movies James, correctly. you've never played the, the Vampire the Masquerade games. No. Uh, which, you know, the, Masquerade, the, the tabletop role-playing game and the video games. Shape. But the, in, in those uh, games there are different clans of vampires and each of them sort of represent different myths of vampires. Oh, that's So fun. there are vampires that look like your, your Nosferatu, Nosferatu yeah. Count, whatever that guy's name is, yeah. you know, the freaky vampires. And there's ones that look like European royalty, and there's ones that are you know weird flesh crafty monsters. Are they cool like emo techno ones? Yeah, they're emo techno techno ones. Yeah, yeah, that's my right. favorite. Yeah, I've just downloaded an MP3. They say. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to get it to work in my car though. Ooh. That's right. I've only got this CD player. Ooh. Yeah. Um, if any at all of this is true, which a lot of it is, because the director did leave. Yes, sure. This sucks. I really want yeah. not an example. No. Shut up, shut up, Mason. <laughs> um. I, I, was I was about to hit the pun <laughs> alert button. You could see me reaching for the big red button. <laughs> no, I thought that was the laughter button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mason, uh, bad news. Don't like this. Uh-oh. Uh, so there you go. That's it. Oh, that. Okay. I thought you were going to say there was a new bit of news and you, you were like, no. I thought you were leading into bad news. No, this is good news, okay. unless you consider it bad news. Hugh Jackman. Oh. This is huge news. Can and I jump in with one bit of news? Sure. Let's do it. <clears throat> damn it. That's right. God damn it. Entertainment, I want to say weekly. Okay. Director James Gunn and Peacemaker actress Jennifer Holland marry at ceremony packed with Marvel and DC stars. Isn't that lovely? Yes. That's lovely. Did you get an invite? Yeah, I couldn't make it though. Oh, didn't you? Yeah, I was working. (laughs) Just my regular job. (laughs) You had that shift. Yeah, I had that late shift. My God. I'm like. school holidays. I was also invited. Yeah, we were both invited. We're big time. He's fans of us because that time we annoyed him. (laughs) Remember? (laughs) Yeah, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't annoy him this time. No, he was very nice about it, actually. He's probably on his honeymoon. He probably is. Uh, Director James Gunn, Peacemaker star Jennifer Holland, hit Instagram on Friday with photos of their wedding celebration in Aspen, Colorado. Was John Cena there? John Cena was there. That's what I wanted. You better believe it. Isn't there separate photos, the ones with the Guardians? There's a Peacemaker Peacemaker. cast photo. Is that an actor who, the actors who were in both, are they in both photos? I think so. Because there's a dude with a butterfly in him. Yeah. Rook is definitely in both fo- both sets of photos, I think. He's in Peacemaker? No, I mean, but he's, he's in, in Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Other highlights of the day include the wedding cake toppers designed by Funko, which Gunn said he wasn't allowed to see before the wedding because Bride Pop's dress was too close a match to the real thing. Oh. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. Your wife has recently re-released your uh, your wedding photos. Re-released? Yeah, she's limited re-released edition. for has a limited she? time. I think on so on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, recently. I yeah. did see that, actually, yeah. Because you've been married for? Four times, yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow, you get less marriages for murder. That is true. Mm -hmm. That was a good day, Mason. It's the last happy memory I have. (laughs) Are you saying even, James, even including all these podcasts we've done? (laughs) That is very much correct. Yeah, well. I remember this. Look how dark my hair is. Ooh, so rich and dark. Mm. God, incredible. Uh, There's a lot of great at still. Mm. Mason, Hugh Jackman's Backman. Sure is. Tell Backman, et cetera. Tell Backman. Uh, so he's going to be returning in Deadpool 3 mm. in a trailer reveal that happened where Ryan mm. Reynolds is like, I don't know what to do for Deadpool 3. Run out of ideas. Out of I'm, ideas. I'm creatively bankrupt like all of Hollywood. That's right, that's right. Let's burn it all down. It's a good joke. And then Hugh Jackman happens to be in his home. I'm not joking. No. <laughs> Presumably for good fun times and tequila. That's right. Or gin or whatever mm. he does. One of them, Ryan Reynolds has aviation gin and... Hugh Jackman has another thing, doesn't he? I have no idea. I think he does. Probably does, yeah. He does. Boss. You go boss something. Sure. Like he's doing a Hugo yeah. Boss thing. And then, of course, it's revealed that, yeah, he's going to be returning uh, in the role of Logan, which we'll talk about how, I yeah. guess, in a minute. And then we get the logo of Deadpool and the Wolverine claw marks Hell through it. Yeah. I just want to quickly mention as well on Big Sandwich this week, we moved up our movie commentary. Uh, we've, we've done Deadpool 2. We That's thought, right. well, let's do Deadpool 2. Yeah. And there's actually a, a scene in that movie, which people might have seen, again, resurfacing on Twitter, where he goes to visit X-Men Origins Wolverine and he speaks to young Hugh Jackman and he goes, I'm going to I'm gonna come knocking on your door to, to play Logan again. That's right. Uh, so be ready and whatever. The circle is complete. The prophecy is true. I think this was always going to happen. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think Hugh Jackman was lying Whoa. when he told us he was done with the character of Wolverine Mason. And just before we get back into that, which yeah. we will momentarily, I've just remembered 
uh, that something I was going to say at the start of this episode that uh, this week upcoming on the 9th of October, I'm going to be part of Ooh. Stupid Old Pod Fest. Our friends over at Stupid Old Studios uh, uh, are running a little fundraiser to keep yeah, yes. get their get their studio up and running. Amazing, big big time supporters of of Australian comedy and an Australian podcast and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so they're running ten hours of live comedy podcast streaming uh, all on one day, and I will be part of Sam Peterson's podcast Confessions of the Idiots along with Michelle Brazier and Broden Kelly. Wow, special guest. That's right, special guests. Three. You're the least funny person on that panel, <laughs> I know, Madison. but we're all equally good friends, <laughs> so that counts for something. Uh, but if you want to check that out, you, you can either watch it live on the day or if you buy a ticket, you can stream it after the fact. You just go to sospresents.com. Very cool. Right I will there. be tuning in for some of that, but not nice. all of that, Mason. Terrific. A bunch of fantastic podcasts. Check out the lineup if you could, Mason. I won't. Check it out if you oh, okay, time. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Excellent stuff. Do go on. Plumbing the Death Star Confessions of the Idiots. Don't you know who I am? Two in the Think Tank, Kentucky Fried Chat and Pop Gaze. Who knew it with Matt Stewart? Who knew it with Matt Stewart? That's right. That's a new one. It is. Great stuff, Mason. And if there was a second trailer. Did you see the second follow-up trailer? Oh, yes. Where they, they alle- new- they, James, they allege to answer a lot of questions about... Uh, the the various continuities and yeah. and uh, and questions that uh, how is this happening how is this happening all the all the questions the uh, the viewers have and just, instead of bloody answering them they pretend they're going to bloody answer them and then there's some music so music goes on the top. top of drowns out their bloody answers are teether but a bit of a joke there there was some lip reading so oh, it's yes. mostly being deciphered and okay. it's just like and there's an explosion and then there's a fight and whatever so yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. actually there okay, right. it was said that he wanted to do what. Rashomon style at one point. Do you remember he said that a few years back? Oh, I don't remember that, but so so each character would have their own interpretation of events in the, the movie? Okay, sure. And the other one is... Or just black and white and yeah. a murder. And the other thing it was going to be a road trip movie Great. Um, at one point as when well. You, and you, you theorised that it was going to be Deadpool and the actor Hugh Jackman. I would love that. I yeah, mean, well, I'd, that's what you, that's yeah, your, that's your theory, right? Yeah, yeah. Also, we've got a video out, Mason, mm-hmm. a few weeks back. It's called Six Marvel Characters the MCU Can't Move and you... You stupid son of a bitch. Oh, what did I say? You said in this video, well, Hugh Jackman said he's never coming back as Logan. And then I said, well, we'll see, which I think completely nullifies the previous statement. And all it says there is this comment aged well. Oh, this aged like milk. Oh, actually, he is coming back. Oh, I don't know if you heard, but this video is out of date now because Deadpool... I live in the future, you fucking idiot. I live where you live. I don't live in this video. What are you fucking stupid? Is your brain broken? James, you live in that video. You're in that video right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm in this fucking video. James, just just breathe and focus. Anyway, Rob the Space Knight is a copy. is a toy <laughs> character and you can't, they can't, they lost the rights to the character, so you can't see you're in the video. Here's one. Hugh Jackman is done with being Wolverine. Hugh Jackman will be back as Wolverine in Deadpool 3, which was set up in Deadpool 2. Thanks comment from four hours ago. Really great. <laughs> This is all engagement, James. I think it's good. I, I know, but that's part of me is like, well, leave a pin comment that's like, hey, shut up. Oh, nice. Another part of me is like, this video is doing well. Mm. <laughs> and do I just let this ride? <laughs> well, this didn't, didn't age because well. Because when you, when you go to like The Guardian, if you find it, if you go look, look at a news article in The Guardian and it's an old one, it'll be like, this is an article from four years ago. Like it's right at the top, so you know. Yeah, yeah. So you don't, yeah. you know. Exactly. Uh, this one says, Hugh is back to laughing faces. Oh, so they're, uh, they're, they're weeping. Uh, if only they could have anticipated you and Ryan. This is your fault, by the way, I for know. saying that. Yeah, I did it on purpose. Uh, to this upset didn't, you. This didn't age well, and it's only been a week. Hugh Jackman is back. Uh, Rumour is Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine for Deadpool 3, and the comment underneath is, there's no there's no rumor that's been confirmed. Can you, um on YouTube, can you censor any comments that have a specific word in them? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, just you get rid of Wolverine. This video didn't age well. Hugh Jackman retired. This quote aged well. He's done with Wolverine. We'll see. Uh... <laughs> James, just just mute the words. Wolverine, Logan, Hugh Jackman, aged future video, uh, quote, <laughs> internet. <laughs> yeah. You know, absolutely. So the Hugh line, uh, the Hugh Wolverine line is especially hilarious now. Hugh Jackman done with Wolverine. Especially hilarious. Ex- especially this aged well. <laughs> James, we're doing too many riffs, and by riffs I mean you getting in, going slowly insane <laughs> over looking at comments on one of your own videos. You're right. Mm. Let's move forward. Anyway, they also mentioned the video that, well, Logan is set in 2028. Yeah. So it could be set before Logan. Mm-hmm. But I do you think there's going to be – 
Like I think there'll be a like a glib remark as to when this is happening. Of and course, how this there'll is be. Happening. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you'll snatch him out of time, or not even. Yeah, and we'll just. Move I mean, forward. they're not. He's not going to be sad, Wolverine. He's not going to be sad, Wolverine from Logan, who's dying. And he's yeah. It's just a. Maybe we'll get clone Wolverine from Logan. Yeah, maybe. Mean clone Wolverine. Mean clone Wolverine. Get the yeah. wrong one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I want it to be Hugh Jackman as Hugh Jackman. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think that's going to be no, it, but because people will be mad. But but again, like the you know the the entire we in the comic books we've had an old man Logan and we've had that character jump to the present day and yeah. we've had the present day one die and then he comes back and you know it's uh, the the idea that you can't enjoy the saga of. Wolverine from X Men One to Logan, you can't enjoy that anymore because a movie came out afterwards where he's having a fun adventure. That's odd to me. Yeah, like it's you know you you can have you can have that epic storyline and the and the send off to the character and then just be like, and I know it's because they've tied the character and the actor together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he wants to do another one, let so let it. him do another one. And money, and money. Yeah, fifty million dollars probably, and all the aviation gin he can bathe in, which would be none. Because yeah. he wouldn't want any. Be bad for your pores. It'll dry out, dry out your pores, yeah, I think, And he don't, wouldn't want to drink any because he's got to be getting abs for the Wolverine yeah. again. So oh. he's going to be in the costume, right? What if he's in that yellow costume that the they spandex. teased? Oh, the one the from... The one they teased in the Wolverine or... You mean in the deleted scene? Yes. yes give him that maybe. one. Now give him the spandex. Has he ever had the... Never. The the the, no. the big wings on the no, head. No, never. Nothing. I reckon it'll be that one. Because cl- that one looks like... That one meshes with the Deadpool... Aesthetic, and it looks like the X Men costumes in yeah. the Deadpool movies. The closest thing would probably be that they've done is, I guess, in I think it's in the third X Men movie. It's got like I think he's got yellow lining. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I guess the date of future past is yeah. Whoop, is, but he never really wears them. No, doesn't wear a mask. Okay, no, he doesn't. I reckon it's going to be that one if I had to guess. Because yeah. this is all. This is going to be all about. And people are already mad. But this is already. This is going to be about fan service. Everybody out there who's yeah. mad. This is going to be every. Bit and every joke that people have made about Wolverine, yep. and all the stuff from the comic books that people like. Why does he? Why has he never done this? Or why has he never done that? Or yeah. why has he never worn this costume? They're gonna they're gonna put that in this movie. I completely agree. Yeah, and he's gonna Wolverine's gonna be like, I'm having a bad time of this. Mm. I'm not loving the jokes that this guy's making. That's right. I'm serious. Mm. And Deadpool will be like, Look at my balls. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And we will all stand as one and cheer in the cinemas. Now, John Krasinski also said something afterwards. Was like, Is this John my Krasinski? movie as well? Uh, apparently he's also doing a move with Ryan Reynolds as well, but that got me thinking. Oh, yes. Do you think, because I know he, he nearly, or he apparently at least looked into it, tried to get Chris Evans for the Human Torch in Deadpool 2. Oh, Do you think we're yeah. going to get Krasinski's fan, Mr. Fantastic? We will certainly get some multiversal hijinks, I think. Yeah. Now that now that mul- the multiverse or is not, on the th- table. Does it have to be multiverse or can it just be he opens a door and somebody's standing there? That's exactly right. Yeah, no, I, I think the There's I, no time. Yeah, I don't think Deadpool. there'll be any, I don't necessarily think there'll be any portals or anything. I I wouldn't even rule out the the you know uh, the thing that they do at the Oscars or the MTV Movie Awards or whatever where he just walks through the set like behind the scenes of the set and he ah. talks to the grip or whatever. Do you think they're allowed to break the continuity and the real and the fact that the realism of the MCU yeah, huh? to be like this is a movie and you're watching movies? I don't know. Yeah. You're watching movie. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean though? <laughs> Only if they point to the screen and go, this is the MCU and you're watching movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, in terms of, like, yeah. can, can he can he break the illusion yeah. of well, it? Well, um, Jennifer Walters can. Yeah, that's and maybe true. That's the, but she never walks behind the set. Not yet, but Deadpool has more powers. Yes, mm. or equal powers. Well, he has a, he has equal powers, but he has more standing in the fan community, I think. Well, that, that is day. certainly true. So We're, I think if anybody could do that, he could. Yeah. But I I feel I kind of feel like She-Hulk has kind of been the soft launch for Yeah. you can talk to the audience if you want. In the so, MCU, specifically, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, she was the comic book character that did it. She did it before him, didn't yes, she? Yes, yeah. she did, yes. Wow. Yeah. I'm still mad about that, but... Uh, <laughs> It is what it is. Mm. Ultimately, though, this is this is good and interesting. I feel. I think it's good and Why interesting. Not? Yeah, and you know, I think it leaves. I'm I'm hoping that. Mm. And, uh, we talked about Deadpool too because we talked over it as That's mentioned. Right. Links below if you want to check it out. We but, didn't talk about it. No, no. no. <laughs> but uh, what I like, I like Deadpool two, two better than Deadpool one because the budget is bigger and yes. they're allowed to be like. 
Here's the juggernaut. Mm. Here's Cable. Here's a Hugh Jackson sequence. There's some real. He's a Hugh Jackman sequence. Yes. There's some really good action in that yeah. movie, and just the expanding roster of weird characters, and they bring mm. in X Force and they kill them all immediately. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can do now with a budget and a world like this, and to open it up even more. Mm-hmm. Like he's talking about DC movies in there. He's like, this is the DC. This is Dark Knight. Sure. The DC universe. Whatever. Maybe this time he'll mention the Image universe. I would love, or the Malibu Comics universe. Oh, Malibu Stacy. Yes. The action figure from uh, the, Simpsons. the Simpsons. Yes. Yes, yes. So I just think, I mean, that could that could also blow oh, up in their face. Ryan Reynolds, if you're listening, or Hugh Jackman, if you're listening, mm. or our friend Hollywood Pete, who knows Hugh Jackman, if yes. he's listening, if he could pass along, Please. if we could request a, a reference to Malibu comics, <laughs> specifically the Malibu Ultraverse. Okay. Prime, Firearm, Prototype, N- now, Mantra. We've got one message that we can pass on. All of think, this. Do you think maybe we should have thought of a thing no, to, it's too late. together? No, no, that's fine. That's, that's what we want. <laughs> That's what we want, James. I don't think you brought it up. Some of I did, some of those might not be real as well. Maybe, maybe I'm making them up. Maybe I got the names wrong. I can't remember. Uh, so this actually has a release date. Uh, that was one of the gaps in the um, in the MCU. Ah, uh, Myster- the one of the mysterious ones, and we were like, yeah. "What's this?" Um, which we knew it was coming. But we didn't have the release date of it. So it's September sixth, twenty twenty four. So this is two years away, uh, which seems like a good amount of time. Sean Levy, who directed the one. Where he's, 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 he's his own dad fight a space pilot, space fighter pilot. He's got a lightsaber, but it's not a lightsaber. lightsaber thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he also do um, Free Guy? Free Guy, he did Free okay, Guy right. as well. So. <laughs> he did Free Guy, and I'm my own dad, laser space fighter. But Ra- Mark Father. Ruffalo is also my dad. Ra- Mark Ruffalo is my dad. Terrific stuff. There you go. There's um, an evil lady. She's, there's two evil ladies. Two evil. And they're the same lady, but one's in the one's past. One's the age looks terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. great. <laughs> Should we move forth? Yes. Huge tech companies in America, Mason, uh, they pay next to nothing in taxes. What? Boo. Yeah, boo. Meaning that they barely give anything back to society, the society that made them rich. They seem very bad. I agree. Now, they also, they might not do a lot of giving, but I'll tell you this much. Oh, yeah. They sure do a lot of taking. That's the opposite of giving. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about how these tech companies enrich themselves by taking your personal Data. How dare they? I agree. That's my data. They grab your website history, your email metadatas, and your video searches to create a detailed profile on you, then they sell that off to the highest bidder. Well, I say get your hands off all that stuff. I agree. Companies aren't just selling products anymore, Mason. They're selling you specifically and people listening to this. Oh, what have we sold? You have become the product. I don't want to be a product. I want to be a man. Well, Mason, to protect your identity. I want to be a man. You can be a man. <laughs> okay, great. And to protect your identity and data for these tech giants, I highly recommend using ExpressVPN every time you go online. Now, think about all the websites you visit. Facebook, Twitter, Google. Everything you do and say online is tracked by these giant corporations. Using your public IP address, they can uniquely match your activity and know your location. Not a fan of that. Agreed. ExpressVPN makes you anonymous online by camouflaging your IP address and replacing it with a different secure IP of your choice. Nice. ExpressVPN also encrypts all of your data so that it's protected from hackers and anyone else that's trying to spy on you. And what I like most about ExpressVPN, Mason, this Go is what on. I like most, it's is how easy it is to use. Just download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button, and you're protected. Whoa. So if you're like me and believe in your internet data belongs to you and not to greedy corporations, then ExpressVPN is the answer. Yeah. You can actually protect your data with the number one rated VPN provider today by visiting expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet to get three months free on a one-year Package. My goodness. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash weekly planet. ExpressVPN dot com slash weekly planet to learn more. And Mason, you can be a man again and not a product. Yeah. I'm a man. He's a, he's a man, everyone. Now, Mason, this is actually the perfect jumping off point. This Hugh Jackman. This big, oh, big he's Hugh known Jackman. for his perfect jumps, isn't he? He really is. Yeah. He's going to blow out a knee, though. You just bloody wait, mate. Uh, so I want to talk about actors who said they'd never do a particular role again. And okay. And then they went, fine, I'll do it. A bit of never say never again, you might say. That's definitely going to be on the list today, Mason. <laughs> now, because I want to determine, like, what what's the reason for an actor to come back? Mm. But it's always money is Joy. the number one. But, but how much money? How, how much money, which I have for and most of And how much these. drama? How much And drama. how much spite? Yep. How much do they hate the studio? And who do they hate specifically working at the studio? <laughs> yes. Is there... A, is there a kid who lives next door to, who's mean to them and they're like, well, I'm going to show you, kid. Exactly. You know? These are all That's great right. points. So for the first, let's let's start with Hugh Jackman, okay. good as any. Mm. So for the first X-Men movie, he made a, a paltry 
five hundred thousand dollars. Embarrassing. This is all him. USD, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the second, is that e- more than some? That would be more than some. Like, did, what did Chris Evans get? It was something. It like, was something like three hundred ninety thousand yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think Hemsworth got about three hundred thousand for wow, Thor wow, as well. Wow, wow, wow. Now they they're like fifteen, yeah. twenty. But they hadn't been in Paperback yeah. Hero, obviously. No, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that obviously he was relatively unknown. Like he was mm-hmm. known a little bit in Australia. Yeah. And he'd done stage performances, etc. It was supposed to be Do Gray Scott. We've talked about it. They mm-hmm. wanted Russell Crowe. And Russell Crowe also recommended Hugh Jackman apparently. Yeah, right. But he ended up getting a million dollars for the second X Men movie. Nice. Which also makes sense because it's an ensemble, and they're mm. still like, "Who's the breakout character?" Yeah, right, right, obviously right. Him, obviously, sure. And the third movie, X Three, he got five million dollars. Mm. Now, X Men Origins Wolverine. Oh yeah, which is a movie. The I'm, good one. Yes, the good one. Which is a movie I'm researching for another thing, which I don't want to talk about and oh. spoil yet, Mason. He actually made twenty million dollars for that. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, which is incredible because that I guess. Because it's the worst one. It's the worst one, and that, and but also it makes sense because outside of him, like who's the, who are the who are the stars? Exactly, of that? the premise was going to be we're going to do X Men Origins and all the other uh, mm. heroes, but that was you know very pie in the sky in the sense that who else has an interest? In, who else has an origin that interesting? Well, a lot of them, but they don't care, <laughs> and it doesn't translate well necessarily to the big. Screen, I don't. I don't they think. didn't try though either, did they? No, that's true. Yes, they mashed a few of them together in mm. like. In uh, X Men Origins, whatever it is, yeah, first class. Mm-hmm. But then they just just turn those into boring X Men movies. I did <laughs> yeah. Uh, now he actually took a pay cut for Logan to make it R rated. Oh yes, but he also I think he got a back end deal on that, so he probably did well. And then said, "I'll never do it again." And now he's back, presumably for the standard fee for something like this is about twenty million. Sure is yeah. Now I do think- an unfathomable amount of money, really. But I think he likes to do this stuff so he can do Broadway stuff as well right. and smaller projects where he's doing Broadway stuff mm. <laughs> on theatres. Or doing one of those in ones where he's theaters. a man in a suit and he's a senator and yeah. they're like, you've done some stuff, senator, and we know. And he's like, well, you... You don't know anything. Yeah, you don't know. I actually know more things than you. Yeah, then he goes to jail probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he does a few of those, the the, the clean-shaven Hugh Jackman look. Yeah, he does a lot of that, doesn't he? It is, yeah, it's odd seeing him like that. Or that one where he reminisces about his dreams or his... Oh, where he thinks about his memories. Yeah, that's the one, yes. <laughs> reminiscences? Yeah, reminiscences. I'm to watch that. Reminiscences. I'm reminiscing. I'm reminiscing about Nin. Help, I'm stuck Nine. in the reminiscing machine. Oh, no. It's reminiscing my memories. But if we pull you out, you'll die in, in real life and also in your memories. <laughs> So we can't do that. So you're going to have to go through your memories. Nah, just open it, I reckon. Let me out. Oh, that worked. <laughs> well, good night. See you tomorrow. All right. <laughs> do you mind if I take a drink from the fridge? Well, I, normally I'd add it to your tab, but it's fine. You just take that take that one. I'll write it off. I'll write it off. It's fine. You did get caught in the reminiscing machine. That's true, yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you waive your right to a lawsuit <laughs> if you take the drink, though. <laughs> uh, here's an interesting one. This is Linda Hamilton. Okay, so the, the revelation there is he just wants to do this again. Yeah, and, ma- his- and money. And money, okay, sure. Yeah, sure, uh, yes, yeah. But I think he likes it. I think mm. he does love it, like really. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the role that made him famous. Yeah, yeah. So, and know. I think also – I mean, a lot of these yeah. are the role that made them famous. I'm sure – and I'm, I feel like – again, we don't know Hugh Jackman from Bloody Bar or so, but I feel he like he just likes palling around on set. Yeah. And why wouldn't you want to pal around with your pal Hugh, Ryan Reynolds? They're pals. Mr. Ryan Reynolds, you know. Because they out. haven't really had any screen – I mean, they, they had that – they were in X Men Origins Wolverine, but they weren't. Have know. they ever shared a screen time in a movie? Yeah, in X Men Origins Wolverine, they're in that list. Oh, sorry, a they're good in that movie? lift. No, a more not recent. A, no, movie. not in a good movie. No, I forgot no, no. they were actually in a movie together. <laughs> yeah, because when we think of the when we think of Wolverine versus Deadpool, we think of the yeah with the body double. So and where he's using like archival footage for the Deadpool yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, or he's stapling Hugh Jackman to his face. And yes, exactly. Et yeah. Anyway, let's talk about Linda Hamilton. Okay, who returned to the role of Sarah Connor at age 62 for the movie Terminator Dark Fate. That's right. Bearing in mind she turned it down before. She didn't want to do T3. Mm. She did a voiceover in Terminator 4. Mm. She had, like, recordings that she left for John oh, Connor. Oh, right. Okay. So here's how it happened. What happened in 5? Or is uh, Dark Fate 5? Dark Fate no, 5 six. is Genesis. Five is Gen- Amelia yeah. Clark was Sarah Connor yes, in correct. Genesis. Yeah. Okay, right, right. So she, got, she didn't get much for the first Terminator, okay. but for the second Terminator she got $1 million mm-hmm. and she got all buff and all of that and it's an yeah. incredible performance, uh, which I th- it's also I think is unfair because Arnold got $12 million for that. Right. And, and he, he was, actually got fatter. <laughs> you seen that guy? Ridiculous. Mm. But look, I also think, look, I understand because he was the biggest star at the time. Sure. But she's in the world, really. In the world, yeah. But she's she's amazing in oh, that yeah, movie. Oh yeah, definitely, and, yeah. And, but I guess the other thing is she was married to James Cameron at the time. Mm-hmm. So 
there would have been benefits to being married to James Cameron. You get to go also, in the submarine. To get this going the submarine, but also like you know you're sharing income. That's true. I hope so. At yeah, least. Yeah. So you, re- so she'd be getting that million dollars. She'd be like, "Oh, we're putting this in the joint bank account, are we?" Yeah, exactly. Mm, all right. Mm. Wow. Well, yeah. Real drop in the ocean for Mister Bloody James Cameron. Though. I complete. Well, it's very good, Mason. Mm. But the thing is, as well, they there was a, there was rumors mm-hmm. that he uh, cheated on her in the mid to late nineties. I don't know whether this is true. And then she got apparently fifty million dollars in the divorce. I see. So she doesn't need to work. Right. Right. But also. It's funny if she is in a sequel to a movie that her husband made, but he's yeah. not involved in any way, I guess. No, he's involved in that quite a lot. Dark Fate, was yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Apparently, well, Tim Miller's talked about who directed it was like, I didn't like the process of working on that because I okay. felt we were just like kind of going up against each other. Right, 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 right. Again, I think of the Terminator sequels, it's by far the best. Well, what, even after Terminator 2? Interesting take you've gone there. <laughs> Well, you've really, you, you've gone too far, James. Well, I've said it. That's how your brain so, works. So that's it. Yeah, that's that's your taste and opinions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She also trained for a year. She's talked about how, like, I don't have any of the hormones that I used to have, right. so it was much harder sure. to get into shape because I'm older. Yeah. Um, I think she's good in that movie I as agree, well. Yeah. But do you think she did it for money? I couldn't find a definitive figure on this either. I would say at the very least $5 million, if not right. more. But you got that, and you're saying she got $50 million into the divorce. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I, mean, I wonder if was, so. Was 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 James Cameron on set for a significant? I don't know about that, but I know right. he was in, heavily involved in crafting okay. the story. Right. Mm. I don't know. Maybe she was just in it for you know. Just maybe she was just like, I want to put in a, a better performance than I did in T two or whatever or T one. Impossible. That's an, those are both mm. incredible movies. Maybe she was like, I want to put in a better performance than Amelia Clark did in T five. You don't need to do any of that. <laughs> Maybe I wanted to put in a better performance than uh, Claire Danes in T three, which was a different character, but still, but still I don't like Claire Danes. She said, <laughs> <laughs> "I hated my so called life." She said, "Wow, really? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah." Talking yeah, about that's true. bringing that back as well. Whoa. That show I didn't watch. Um, she's also mentioned like she never wants to do it again. She's like, okay, "I'm right. done with this. I probably yeah. shouldn't have done it." She's yeah. like, "I don't really. I don't think it's a good movie. It's missing something." Okay, and I shouldn't. And I don't want to do it again. And mm-hmm. I don't think she will. I think Terminator. I'm in their franchises. If they continue the show in an animated thing or a live action right. show, maybe she'll pop up. Oh. But as like a, they're never going to not, I can't see anytime soon, mm. taking a swing at Terminator like this, putting like $200 million into an R-rated Terminator sequel. Let me pitch this to you, James, bearing in mind you cannot veto it for a variety of reasons. Mm-hmm. Terminator babies. And the babies are Terminators or the Terminating babies or both? Oh, no, that's actually – that's quite loaded now that I think about it, oh, the idea can't, of Terminating babies. We can't babies. veto it, though, That's can true. We? I'm going to say all the characters are babies. Okay. Some time travel incident has happened, so Arnold's a baby, he's a baby Terminator, and Linda Hamilton's a baby. And The um, time travel turned him into a baby? Yes. Okay, yes. but a robot baby. Turned everybody into a baby, yes. In the world. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, Sarah Connor's a, a baby. Would John- you prefer that they were toddlers? So they can move. It's like Muppet Babies. It's like okay, so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 she's like more of a toddler, but John Connor is smaller. Okay, she can carry little okay. baby John Connor. There's a baby Miles Dyson. Okay, there's a baby um, that psychiatrist who keeps coming around and getting shocked by the Terminator <laughs> giving him PTSD, and the gotcha, cigarette gotcha. falls yeah, out of yeah, his yeah. mouth. But it's like a candy cigarette because okay. he's a baby. No, it's a real cigarette. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is what I need. I need honest <laughs> feedback and not vetoes. This is how we get movie gold. <laughs> Are you saying Linda Hamilton would return for this? To yes. DH her, like the movie Little Man. Yeah. The Wayans movie. Because I snuck it into a contract for Dark Fate. <laughs> I, put it, I flew to America specifically. I tricked everyone. They all have to do it. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Uh, anyway, I think it was partially money, but more like, sure. Mm. That's what it seems the like The baby to me. T-1000, but he can only turn into little things. Oh. Like a set of blocks or something. Yes. Like one of those wheelie things you push and they've got the, yeah, the yeah. balls in them and they pop like yeah, popcorn. Yeah. yeah. And there's a chase sequence and he's in one of those yellow Tonka trucks. Yeah, very good. Yeah, okay, yeah, I love yeah, all yeah. of that. Uh, there you go. Let's talk about Michael Keaton though. Okay. Who of course uh, is returning in Batgirl, The Flash and Aquaman 2. But also if any of those. <laughs> of those. <laughs> They're definitely gone forever. <laughs> so Bat- some have been deleted from servers. Yeah. None of that's coming back. Batgirl is dead. Yes. It seems for... A while at the very least. Some to all of his scenes might have been removed from Aquaman. Because Ben Affleck is back. Yeah. And The Flash, there's a lot happening with The Flash, but I think Mm. it will be released, it seems, at this point. Yeah, because what other options do they have? Let's just wait and see. It's too expensive. Oh, there's another bit of news from from this week. Yeah. um, 
the, the there's a there's an animated series called Final Space, which is owned oh, by yeah, Warner yeah. Brothers, Holland and Rogers, they've yeah. just they, he put out a statement. They've just like they've they've taken it off streaming or a, any place where they can contractually remove it from streaming, they're taking it off. Yeah, they're just gonna they're not gonna release any physical versions. It's just gone. I mean, Ridiculous. people can steal it. I watched obviously. a few seasons of that. I, was, yeah. I thought I quite enjoyed it. It got better, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so it pay. Uh, he was paid five million for Batman. Yes, original Batman. He was paid eleven million. And people were ropeable. They were. They were steaming. They were spitting chips. They were. They were steaming and spitting chips. Yes. Okay. They were steaming, comma, and they were spitting chips. Oh, they have steamed chips in England, don't they? Yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, he was paid eleven million for Batman Returns. Mm. God, this is big money. And for three, he was offered fifteen. Fifteen million. Okay, but he turned it down. But that was also because. Burton was gone. He didn't want to do a mm. Schumacher. He thought it was silly and whatever. Yeah, right, right, right. And so he just – and, you know, he, he was never against it, but he was just like, ah, that's yeah. not really – I'm not mm. interested in this. So I think this is the challenge of doing it again, but they would have given him a lot of money to do yes. these things that he's mm. not even yeah. fearing any, anymore. Do you think they're going, we're killing the Keaton stuff now? We're not going back to that? We don't know yet. I Maybe. Guess. I mm. mean, also – there is still time to replace him with with Ben Affleck's Batman or Pattinson's Batman yeah. somehow. Like if 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 it is if it is crucial to the plot that the Flash meets a parallel universe Batman that isn't Affleck's Batman, yeah. they could do Pattinson Batman. Yeah, they could find a th- another option. But isn't because they, also- they might be like it's too confusing if we've got a we 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 need a we have a maximum of two Batmans at any time, two Batman, and it's we're gonna use we're gonna go with Pat, Pattinson and Affleck maybe. Now, the reason also isn't that they put in Affleck is because th- this is potentially Aquaman 2, even though it's out in December of next year, uh-huh. could potentially happen before The Flash. Maybe. Depending yeah. on what happens with The Flash. Is mm, that right? That's correct, yes. But I don't know what's happening. With, with, mm. the, he could still be in The Flash. It could be both Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that also might be confusing. Yes. Depending on when this comes out. Uh-huh. We'll figure it out yeah. at some point. We'll, mm. we'll have to come back to this. But anyway. Yeah. I don't know. It's part of an ensemble. I don't know mm. whether he would have. I don't think he's going to be getting a fifteen million dollar paycheck. Maybe I, collectively. I feel for all like, of it. but like his roles aren't big in this stuff. I feel at some point in the near future, Keaton will just tell us how much money he got paid. Like he seems the kind of guy who'd be like, "Yeah, yeah they gave me ten million dollars for yeah. this for two scenes." And I was like, "Yep, yep, great." Just put it in my car. Yeah, just put a big bag of money in my car. Oh, the car got stolen, did it? Okay. <laughs> Oh, this guy will roll with anything. He's, he's rich. It doesn't yeah. matter. Did you like Birdman? I don't think I finished Birdman, but I did. Okay, great. But I, I paused it for some reason and then I didn't come back to it. Okay. Did you like it? I did like it, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I should uh, give it a rewatch. It's on everything now. So I heard Michael Keaton is going to get Warner Brothers to delete it because he hates you. That's what I heard. Well, Mason, Sean Connery, he returned to James Bond thrice. Oh. I'm going to go through this. This one's interesting. Wow. The other ones weren't interesting. This is interesting. Okay, great. He got sixteen thousand dollars for Doctor No. Yes, uh, which we're, we're talking spite. This I feel is unless you've got a, unless you've got more up the pipe. No, this this Connery I think is maximum spite. Nothing is more spiteful than this. Mm. Uh, so they also, to be fair with Doctor No, they didn't mm. know that it was going to be huge. And yeah, whatever. and, and also big, sixteen thousand dollars. What year was Doctor No? I'll look it up. Sixty two. I want to okay, say. Okay, all right. I, I, yeah, I was actually, I'm going to calculate it. I was going to do the calculations, but I didn't. 62, you're right. Uh, so um, that's American dollars. Yes. Okay, right. Okay, continue with your talks. Um, so he did a few more, but he never got the pay rise that he was after. Yes, Despite that's true. them doing really well. He so, always felt he was very hard done by, I think, by the Broccoli family. I mean, he was initially, but then everything kind of worked out for him. Mm. So then Lazenby did one. Yes. And because people hated Lazenby at the time, but <laughs> people have since come around on it. It also... <laughs> The Lazenby one didn't do terribly commercially either. Like yeah. it did okay. Yeah, yeah. But Lazenby also didn't sign on for more than one because he didn't want to get typecast because yes, he's a moron. Right. So, so they went. Hey, that's our George Lazenby <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> that's our moron. Yeah, that's right. No, he's, 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 George Lazenby will say anything in an interview as well, by the way. That's true. Look up any interview of George Lazenby. Yeah. He's talking about all the Bond women he slept with at different conventions. Yeah. Like what, like Bond girls or just fans of? No, no, women like who are now like to do the tours and whatever. Oh, okay, right, right. He talks about okay. them, whatever. Yeah, wow. he's, he's just out, he's just having a great time. Yeah, um, he's the he's the very definition of Aussie larrikin. Yeah, think. well, that's how he got the role. Yeah. He just went, I'm James Bond, and they went, all right, <laughs> you're gonna give it to me. That's pretty much what yeah. happened, though. Mm. It would never happen now. That's true. Uh, so he came back for Diamond. Have to be on TikTok. <laughs> the next George Lazenby is on TikTok. Really? Yes. So he came back in the early 70s. George Flies and B. 
He did the hands. He did the hands, everyone. I did the hands. It's true. <laughs> I was like, what's a cool current reference? Hands. Yeah. Uh, he got one point. Which, you know, George Crinsonby. Crin- cringe. It could be. turn yeah. out that way. He got yeah. $1.25 million for Diamonds of Forever in the early 70s. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, just give him a bunch of money. Okay, now. But that still didn't sit well with it. 1962, yeah. 16 grand would be in, in today's money $156,000. So that's a lot of money, but it's yeah. not. It's not. I mean, I think for the first one, it's yeah. understandable. They didn't know it was going to be know. big. But from then on, yeah, yeah. that's not an acceptable amount yeah, of money. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, to, you know, obviously it launched his career, but also he launched the behemoth that is the James Bond franchise. It's like Siegel and Schuster creating Superman. They didn't know at the time, but yeah, exactly. You know, they, they they wouldn't they wouldn't have any money without DC, but also DC wouldn't have their tentpole character. It's kind of the same thing. Really. That's right. Mm. Now that one point two five was a record, yeah, uh, amount of money for the time. I think it was it was then beaten, like obviously since then. But like Brando, for example, for Superman, mm. got a crazy amount of money. Um, Never say never again was then. Would you want to talk about how that's? We're talking. Oh about well, look very yeah. very very briefly. Uh, due to some uh, due, due to some teeny 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 weeny uh, uh, idea theft on behalf of Ian Fleming, the creator of James Bond, mm-hmm. a screenwriter named Kevin McClory gained the rights to uh, make a James Bond movie, mm-hmm. seemingly in perpetuity, yep. based on the ideas he contributed to uh, Ian Fleming's novel Thunderball, uh, which. In, the movie in, in, in Fleming stole the, the, uh, the uh, yeah yeah the, the the ideas, and so they brought in McClory to make to be a producer on Thunderball with the understanding they they the agreement they came to was that he would not he would promise to not make a Bond movie for ten years after that, thinking I assume well if we uh, if we let him do if we let him make yeah. the movie he was envisioning in his head when he wrote the script for Thunderball he'll stop wanting he's not going to make, make the movie Thunderball he won't make Thunderball again <laughs> if we've gotten him to make Thunderball but then of course they've forgotten as we know that Spider is a massive motivator yeah. so like 10 years passed and he's like well I'm making it again and he made um, it in the uh, 1983 yeah. when there was Roger Moore was Bond you, they he competed with competed with Octopussy I think yeah that year. Sean Connery he slapped that wig back on his head <laughs> that's right and he ran back and out he was there. A, Connery was originally going to be a producer on the movie yeah I believe and then they were like well, we can't find a good Bond and he's like well if you give me six million dollars I think it was it was three million dollars three million dollars okay right. plus fifteen percent of the gross that'll do it he there did we go very well yeah out yeah, of yeah. This. and his wife at the time I believe. Coined the name "Never Say Never Again" because oh, he said never. He, he said, said never, never again. again. Yeah, yeah, and she was like, "Never say never again." Yeah. Uh, also, it's rumored. Also, he he actually reprised Bond one more time for a From Russia with Love video game right. in the mid two thousands. And the rumor is for his voice and likeness for that, he got one million dollars. Nice. Uh, he's barely trying in that. Have you ever heard? It? He's just Scottish. No. He's just doing the, which okay, whatever. Right. Like he's a yeah, million yeah. years old. Who cares? Uh-huh. Um, now, this I feel is the reason he came back. In the 80s mm. is for Spike, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% mm. to ruin the Broccoli family or sure. take a big swipe at them because <laughs> he always held a grudge. Yeah. Apparently they made up when the Broccoli guy died at the end. But right, I don't okay. know whether that's true. Also, that Broccoli thing is not true. People probably message you this week. It's pretty true. <laughs> but we talked about it last week. But in the 70s, he also had a series of flops. Oh, so right. he had he did the man who would be king like some did okay. Uh, Zardoz like, was that Zardoz was in there. Uh, Robin and Marion and I think also did okay. Uh, Outland, which is kind of a low key kind yeah, of. Yeah, we're talking about a high movie. moon. Yeah, it's high moon. Uh, but but it's apparently it's all right. But he didn't he didn't have a huge hit, and mm. it was a bunch of duds. And so that I think that was also a factor. Yeah, mm. uh, in him coming back, but it's mostly spite. Mm. Anyways, let's talk about Jamie Lee Curtis because oh. she came back. Multiple times. She did oh, two that. Halloween movies yeah, yeah, initially, yeah. maybe three. It was the two because three was Season of the Witch, right, which was unrelated. I think that was four. Yeah, I don't think you're right. But <laughs> okay, great. Matter. And then she came back for H2O mm-hmm. in the late 90s and yeah. then the new Halloween relaunch yeah. that they did. Uh, did you drop something, Mason? No, that was um, good. <laughs> so the original Halloween. He who smelt it dealt it. Uh, original Halloween, Mason. Oh, yes. 8,000. That's an incredibly low-budget movie. Eight thousand dollars for that movie where yeah. she's the lead, where nobody thought of anything would happen. It's like the first slasher, so they're like, what "Yeah, is this for sure, favorite? yeah, yeah." Not the, you know what I mean? It's mm. one of the early. It ones. could have been one of those things where they like, like relegated to like you couldn't get it. Yeah, like it, it would it would only be showed in like grotty cinemas or like people's basements or whatever. Yeah, as far as they knew, it could have been you know. So exactly, 
Uh, for the second Halloween, she got a hundred thousand dollars, which is that's that's great. That's a huge improvement. <laughs> that is great. Now for H two O, I think it was ninety seven or ninety eight. Might have mm. been ninety eight. She got five million dollars. Nice, good. good Why good, do you good. think she came back? Because of course. Five million, obviously. Yes. Closure. Uh-huh. She was big in the nineties, though. Yeah. Like it, it was weird because she was she was mm. on Baywatch, but then she'd do like True Lies and this. Was she? It wasn't Jamie Lee Curtis in Baywatch? No. Is it that woman who looks like Jamie? I think Lee there's Curtis? a woman who looks like because <laughs> they the, had the Pamela Anderson, and there was you're absolutely what right. What they actually. had in, in Baywatch is they had Pamela Anderson, and they had um, Michael Knight. David Hasselhoff, yeah, and then they also had on the team like people who actually looked like actual lifeguards. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Jamie Lee was not. She wasn't at all. Did you Google was Jamie Lee Curtis in Baywatch? And there's a big article on it. Yeah, so right. yeah. yeah, I'm an uh-huh. idiot. So I guess she wasn't a TV star. She was, she was doing yogurt commercials in this. Yes. Wow, that's a real egg on my face, Mason. Sure but is. But to be fair, I was joking. Now, oh, that's great. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, that makes sense. Twenty years at twenty year anniversary. Like yeah, yeah. I can un- understand the appeal of that. But then she's killed in Halloween Resurrections, which is the sequel to that. She's barely in it, but she got three million dollars right. that appearance, if you recall correctly. And that one was purely a cash grab, right? Because remember in the previous one, she chopped off Michael Myers' head with an axe, and she's like, "We've done it." It's oh, but then it turned over. out it was a different guy, in different the mask. guy, and whatever. Yeah. And uh-huh. so she was like, "Okay, fine, I'll do it. Give me Did three million dollars." Did we watch a bunch of these for something? We watched H2O we do- when yeah. the f- Halloween, the new one came out. I feel maybe I went above and beyond and watched a bunch of them for no reason. Well, you're an insane. I person. know, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in 2018, she returned again mm-hmm. for what is essentially a reboot. Yeah. She probably did Halloween Age 20 uh, to work with LL Cool J. Do you think? Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then well, she got apparently estimated $5 million for the new one in 2018. Mm. and then, But I can see what I got a cut of it and whatever yeah. as a trilogy. So she's cleaning up. I don't know. I see her in press stuff, and she's like, "This is a legacy," and one of um, the <laughs> characters. I just, I don't believe it. So you've got a, you've got a, in 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 your research, you also scrutinized all the interviews with these people and some of them and judged their. Uh, I think I'm more like that last. You one. You were like they were they acted in those movies, but they could also act in real life. I reckon. I just think that last one was like Halloween Kills was bad. So I'm like, oh, yeah. no, I, I, so that's why I'm like you're giving it a I no benefit you. of the doubt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What if she was like, yeah, I'm back And she here. made me look like a fool for that Baywatch thing. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Look, I'm here because I really respect the legacy of the franchise and, of course, you know, John Carpenter and he's an absolute genius, but also, you know, obviously uh, this movie is bad. Mm. I just want everyone to know. Everyone I, could, to know. I, I am a very good actor, but I could not lie and tell you that I thought it was good it was bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm a good enough actor where I could lie, but I'm rich, so I yeah, won't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. John Carpenter, did he do Halloween? No. Or I make that up? He does that. He says that. Have you seen the <laughs> interviews of him going around? Yeah, and he's just, he's yeah. just tearing through people. Well, I'm glad we I'm glad we aren't interviewing him right now. Yeah. yeah. So there's a where he says a wonderful thing happens every time they like they make a new Halloween movie. I put out my hand and they they give me a check or whatever. Right. And there's the other one where someone's like, What happened Escape from New York was great. What happened with Escape from LA? I think it was just a fan question. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He just doesn't care. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Uh, Mel Gibson. Oh, Gibbo. Ra- lethal Weapon 4. Mm. I think he loves the Lethal Weapon movies, doesn't he? I mean, he's doing another one. He's he's going to be directing the new one since Richard Donner died. Right. Uh, they're all the same movie and I don't like them very much. Okay. Did you ever like them? You must have liked them at the time. I didn't remember which ones I'd seen. Right. And then I watched them all and I'm like, this is the same movie four times. Except they get increasingly... Um, the hair gets worse. The hair gets worse and they get more family friendly, I feel, as the... As the yeah. Not much more, but, yeah. the, but there's less kind of man going to shoot himself in a trailer stuff in the... They fight Jet Li. They do fight Jet Li in three or possibly four, <laughs> yes. Four. Yes. We cut the bullets over. Like he's Murtaugh's family always get kidnapped. That's true. It's like literally the same sometimes thing. Sometimes there's a bomb in a toilet. Yes. Sometimes Chris Tucker is in them. Sometimes mm. Joe Pesci is in yeah. them. Sometimes there's a bomb in a toilet. Sometimes there's a toilet on a bomb. That's right. Uh, anyway, you got $25 million for Lethal Weapon 4. Wow. Now, I think he likes this character. And the reason I say this is because he estimated, because he – I think he financed Passion of the Christ by himself. He made okay. between four hundred and four hundred and seventy-five million dollars. Wow. Mel Gibson is like beyond rich. Yeah. So, so he doesn't need to be doing anything. Yeah. Some of these And I, how much money is he making on Lethal Weapon 5, really? How yeah. much money is Lethal Weapon 5 going to make realistically? Is that a is that a billion dollar movie? It's not a billion dollar movie, but I mean 
in the wake of like a Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, but it's maybe not- there's a bunch of dads out there who are like, oh, if there's another Lethal Weapon yeah. movie, I'm going to jump on that. I mean, you so know? you will of like Mel Gibson. Mm. But he sucks. He- yes, and he's not Australian. <laughs> no, correct. Mm-hmm. But he's a he's a pretty good director. Oh yeah, so mm. he could actually make a good Lethal Weapon mm. movie. I don't know though. I I just I don't see how yes. you get back those two. Mm-hmm. You need to you need a younger cast yep. like you do with Top Gun that people like, sure. and that's really hard to do. I think Top Gun. One you of, need a you need a complete you need a you need a complete precinct of, of police officers seeing no, no, great no, balls no, of no, fire. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old fashioned rock and roll. All right, yeah, yeah that's great. Right. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. You can't do the same song. No. Yeah. He also turned down Bond and Batman, I believe. Mm. He turned down, apparently, I was because read, I was reading up on this, he turned down, he was doing one of the Mad Maxes and he got right. asked about Bond and he's like, no, mm. I don't do that shit. I wonder also a factor in a lot of these might be. And he saw Connery. That's why he's like, Connery's, no, I don't yeah, want right. to do that. Yeah. I wonder if he's like, I wonder if some of this one and perhaps some of the other ones yeah. are kind of to cap off. A legacy that started strong and went bad. I don't think it's ever. I think the first one's like a like an okay buddy cop, thing, right? I guess because mm-hmm. but then they keep making. Oh, I'm that. not necessarily talking about Gibson exclusively. Okay. I reckon maybe some of these they're like okay. Oh, definitely. We, okay, they, we did a couple of good ones and the rest were trash. But if I do this final yeah. one, oh, and I'm sure also you know should I put Stallone in this? I should have right for Rocky and oh. Rambo. I didn't, but, but uh, we did it just then, so it's yeah. okay. Um. I wonder if it's, you know, because some of these people I'm sure would have been getting really good money, but maybe they didn't have any creative input into what they were doing. Yeah. Okay. Some do, some don't. That's a good some, point. Some, you know, force their way into the editing room or the writing room or whatever it is. Yep, but yep. I reckon if some I reckon some of them might have been like, well, I took ten million dollars for that movie and I just went in and I took the paycheck and it kind of sucked. And I wish going back, I wish that I'd said, okay, maybe we change the character arc or we do the whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so maybe yeah. they come back and they're like, okay, well now now that we're in a now that we're in an era where I, the star, get a lot of say, and it's it's I don't have to fight for it. It's just implied that I can go in and yeah. with my star power and tell people what to do. Now I come back and I'm like, this time there's going to be two bombs under the toilet. Do you want to talk about Daniel Craig then? Because <laughs> I feel like you're you're talking. Oh, I didn't even think about, about Daniel, Craig. Daniel Craig. I didn't even think about Daniel Craig. I didn't, but I mean, he he's. Of course, do you have that listed? I or? do actually. Okay, I didn't right. mention it, but. Right. Um, so I said the things that he reluctantly returns on is every James Bond film, including the first one that he did. Right. So it's, it's a definitely a love-hate thing. So you got $3.2 million for Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. And I think that makes sense as a – because that's a proven franchise. Yes. And even though he wasn't like a huge name. He'd done Layer he, Cake. He'd done Layer Cake, but he was. it's implied that he's going to be doing it for a while. Right. So you don't want to – you don't want to – Lowball him in his first one, and then he's mad for the rest of it. Oh, they've they've the broccoli's have learned that yeah, lesson. Exactly. Sure. They they lowballed Connery. They lowballed the the broccoli farmers. Yeah, did they? Yes, that made up thing. Yes, the up. thing that is true. That is really true. <laughs> he got seven point two for Quantum. Mm. He got twenty million for Skyfall. Thirty million for Spectre. Wow. Oh. He also said after he did Spectre, if you recall correctly. That he would kill himself if he did another Bond movie. I do remember that? Yes. Said that, but then like he took that back and he was like, "I'm doing interviews all day, every day, like mm. you know." And then I think though the reason he came back because he he was again very rich at this point and he'd done a bunch of other stuff where he'd made a bunch of money in visa commercials, visa commercials, etc. And so forth. I think he came back for the reason that you said yeah. is because the previous one was bad mm. and he wanted to end on a high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think – Because you don't want – you absolutely do not want – I mean, ideally you want all all the movies you did in a franchise to be good. But well, that's not possible. That's go very on. not possible. What you, the, la, the last thing you want is a good one a good one to start with and then the, the quality declines. Or, or it's perceived that the quality declines all the way down because at least if you go – at least if the first one is great and the – the last one is great. People will go, well, you know, of, of varying quality, but boy, there were some real great ones in there. You know what I mean? Are there any movies though? Franchises? Are, I mean, I think Skyfall is good weapon. as well. Yeah. No, where the first one is good, everything's terrible, and the last one is good. Great question. I bet somebody out there knows. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. I, w- I wish they were in the room with us, but they're not. It'd be great. Mm. Anyways, you got twenty five. Roger Ebert, are you there? Mason. Didn't yes. he or the other guy die? They're both dead, I think. What? Yeah. Siskel. Gene Siskel died. Yes. That's true. Okay. James Gene, is now Googling, Gene. did Gene Siskel die on the set of Baywatch? <laughs> I was actually going to make that joke. He died in 99. Yeah, that's a long time God ago, damn, James. he died a fucking ages yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Am I a stupid person, Mason? I don't want to answer that. 
because you wouldn't understand the words I would use because they would contain more than two syllables. <laughs> anyway, he also got a huge back end on... No oh, t- I've seen his huge back end. I saw him coming out of that ocean. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, on No Time to Die. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I think that one was a labor. I mean, money, mm. but I think I think that was yeah. like, let's do a good one for real. I was joking. Let's do a good yeah. one. I'm not going to kill myself, guys. Don't <laughs> worry about it. You think that this is some elaborate ruse where I'm going to come in mm. and and then we're going to we're going to film the whole movie and we're going to do some really great work and then the last day I'm going to shoot myself in the head <laughs> with one of the prop guns. But actually, I'm not. I was kidding when I said I was going to kill myself, guys. Yeah, but don't leave any guns. Don't leave any <laughs> for safety reasons. Not because I'm going to shoot myself. I also think. As you can see here, I have my wife, Rachel Weiss, and my children here, and it would be very, very upsetting to them if I shot, if I, if I shot myself. They're going to be leaving yeah, shortly, yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's not. It's it's they're just here. To I've inspect. written them all like letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to open like... them later <laughs> when I'm not around. I also think he wanted to kill Bond so he would never come back. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mean, definitely. There's still ways to do it, but and people are still going to ask, "Do you regret killing your version of James Bond?" They're, and do you want to come back? I. He 100%, like he sat down with somebody. He, I bet he sat down with one of the – because he, you know, he also – he had a lot of influence on the script and stuff. I bet yeah. he sat down with the screenwriters and went, what is the out – what is the final what, – what is the, the, the end point of this character that will have people asking the fewest number of questions? Yeah. Oh, it's me getting absolutely <laughs> annihilated? Well, then, yes, let's go with that. Okay, cool. I think you should have seen his like him disintegrate, like the skin come off his yeah, face. Yeah, maybe. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, like he's like it's the end of Indiana mm. Jones. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, we it, it just just peels back all his skin and his bones, and we see his brain, and it's got like it's got like a the, the a royal seal on his brain. It's been branded in. And they go, Q. Do yeah. we have any of James Bond's DNA in case cloning could ever happen in this universe, which we know it couldn't? Yeah. yeah. And Q says no. Hmm. Crits. And I'm shooting myself. <laughs> the technology is in my brain, but I'm shooting myself. No, it's not in my brain, but I'm shooting myself just That's in right. case. And then they pan over, and it's John Cleese, <laughs> and he's like, oh, "I could, I could clone him. Actually, I'll clone him, and then we'll clone Bond. Don't worry about it." <laughs> but he can't clone Daniel Craig. I don't know, man. <laughs> Mason, Kim Cattrall for Sex of the City, <laughs> one and two. Yes, um, she got seven million for the first movie. Now, so, so. Was she reluctant to come back for the movie? Not for the first one, I believe, because okay, right. there was $7 million. This is a very suggestible style topic, I think. I agree. Yeah. Then she got $10 million for the second movie. Okay. Um, that this... one was definitely reluctant. That was 100 These. What is it? What's the salary spread here? Who's who's getting Sarah Pretty Jessica, even now. Sarah Jessica Parker? I think Sarah Jessica Parker getting? was the highest. Okay, right. But it's even other than okay. that, I think, aside from, you know, and you've got to all pay them relatively equally, but she mm. doesn't like doing this or this character anymore right. or uh, any of the people associated sure, with this. Yeah. Though Samantha is coming back in the next series of and just like that somehow. She'll be – a limousine will go past and a woman with a glove <laughs> – like a gloved hand will come out and the, and, and the, all the, the three remaining characters will be like, oh, that was definitely Samantha. <laughs> now, in this – now, she's currently – She'll be killed in a <laughs> cluster bomb explosion. <laughs> A woman in a in a veil be killed in a cluster bomb explosion oh. as all her skin comes off. <laughs> now, they did that in Prison Break and the woman came back ah. in Prison Break. Okay, right. Now, everyone in Just Like That gets a million dollars an episode oh. apparently, right? Okay, You're doing sure. nine or ten a season. You're doing right. very well. Mm-hmm. She doesn't need the money. Yes. Spite and hate and like just growing. No, I wouldn't okay. even say. I think she's even past it. Okay. It's meant she's not coming back. But, but you're I, saying she is coming I back. I maintain, mm-hmm. and I've said this to Claire, because we did Suggestible <laughs> in the City, yes. our podcast, uh-huh. spin-off of our other podcast, Suggestible, mm-hmm. even less successful, Mason. Oh, that's great. Um, I still think she, she will do it at one right. point. I, like, there's a fraction of me. I should say a fraction. I do don't... you think it's because, not because she's going to mend her fences with Sarah Jessica Parker and everybody she doesn't like on that show, yeah. but out of some sort of... No, I spite like it's some sort of like um. I think you've it's, you've groveled and now I'm going to do it because you maybe I think it and might, there needs to be an element in the plot of the show yeah. that suggests I am back because you all groveled. I think it might be like let's let's get some let's get a bit of light on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and which let's is get fine. some sandwiches. Let's, be, let's, let's go to Katz's let's Deli. Let's get some famous, sandwiches. Yeah, and mend some bridges. You know? Sure, okay. And it's a successful show in terms yeah. of like people watch it and stuff. Leonard mm. Nimoy Mason. Oh, yes. You might know him as Spock. I do. Uh, he returned. Okay, so 
He he has a complicated relationship with Spock. He definitely settled into it because well, he had he had a he had two autobiographies of which both, both of which I've Madison. read. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I am Spock. I'm not, I'm not Spock, 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 and then I am Spock. Yes. From twenty years later in 1995. Mm. So that was obviously after the series where he got typecast. Yeah. And now he didn't want to come back mm. to the movies because he owned he was owned owed a bunch of merch rights. I see. So he was also not going to come back for the series. There was going to be a follow up series. We talked about this with Ben Russell. Yes, yeah, Star um, Trek two, two, Volume Two, Two more, more, more just just watch, <laughs> just yeah. have a look at what's going yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Um, Star Wars meant they made it into a movie, and then they got him back for that. He was then killed in. Star Trek 2, mm. seemingly not to return, yes. then was brought back in the next movie. Mm. Now, I th- and then, of course. They probably guilted him into it. They're like, we're calling the next one the search for Spock. And if you don't come back, that last scene's going to be a real bummer. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't find him, actually. Yeah, I don't know. We think somebody, like, we put him in the bin and we checked the bin, but I think they took the bins. They took out? the bins. They took the, the tr- I, I didn't see the truck, but I heard, I, th- I think I heard the truck, and I think they took. So he's probably in the dump now. <laughs> he's probably in the dump, and rats are eating him. <laughs> We didn't find him. We didn't find him though. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'll call it. I'll call the tip. They didn't answer. <laughs> um, oh, and then he came imagine back. Imagine if they had answered though, John. I know. But then he did. He did next year. We just got a bunch of poop and, and garbage and stuff, so we can't tell the difference between that and Spock actually, because he's the, as far as we're concerned, he's the same as poop and garbage. <laughs> anyway, goodbye. <laughs> Love you. We also <laughs> found we also found some space rats eating Spock. We think <laughs> in the poop. Um, he came back for next gen, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did yeah. at least one episode. Wait, did he? But he didn't do generation. Came back. No, um, Spock did come back. That's what yes. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did and he was back, in yeah. Baywatch. That's true. Um, but I think though the reason he kept doing those movies in the eighties because he yeah. likes directing also. Yeah, that's probably it. And he probably got a paycheck for that as well. I assume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we've added, so we've added to the list. Money Spite likes directing. Yep. Didn't want to end on a bad one. No. So there's four at this point. But he did because he did Into Darkness, which That's is the last true. one that he did. Yeah. Yeah. That one felt like completely unnecessary, him being in that one. Mm. The idea of basing the time travel around him for that 2009 reboot, I thought uh, was really good and I yep. thought he was good in that and whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, he seemed to he seemed to like it, but also money. I'm going to say some of both. Like maybe. to the money, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with this one, I think, also. So Gorney Weaver. For Alien Resurrections. Now, for the original Alien, she got $30,000. She got $1 million for Ooh. the second Ooh. movie, The Aliens. Now, apparently also the studio weren't even... We're calling it The Aliens? The Aliens. <laughs> okay. Look, everyone, The Aliens. Apparently the studio didn't even care whether she came back. With, right. But James Cameron was like, if I'm going to do this, mm. she has to be in it. I need someone to maybe cheat on my wife with so if you wouldn't mind <laughs> that's an unconfirmed rumor says mm. james cameron that's right <laughs> it was unconfirmed rumor mm. and then he puts a dollar sign at exactly. the end i'm not going to cheat on my wife with paul riser because he's going to need that storyline for mad about you in a few years Did he time. cheat on his wife in mad about you yeah, no wait his wife cheated on him what yeah hell and hunt they were mad about each other yes because of the impending cheating is that what is that why they were... yes did that happen during the series or before the series? no it happened during the series it's towards the end she slept with somebody else. Yes, I think so. Who was it? I don't know. God damn. That's J- crushing. Jason that. Sudeikis. What? No, I don't know. I should, what? He was a child then. <laughs> <gasps> anyway, she then was paid for Alien 3. Yes. Uh, $5.5 million. Now, was Alien 3 the one where she was like, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't do it, maybe I'll do that it. That was the one where she it. said, I will do this movie. But I want no. But I will do no more movies. Sorry, she said. Uh, sorry, she said she will do aliens mm-hmm. with no guns. The aliens. Yep. She has no guns. She wants to have sex with a xenomorph, and she had to die. And those three things happened in Aliens three and four. Huh. So I don't know whether that was a coincidence or there not. There you go. But Aliens two is Gun City, mate. Mm. Not because. So of we're calling muscles. it Aliens two. <laughs> What is it? Do you know what any movies are called, James? Is it called the Aliens? Do or I need it? <laughs> no. You have what to choose. Is it called The Aliens or is it called Aliens 2? Different foreign markets called it no, different things, That Mason. is true. That is true. Uh, now, there's also, I also found a website. In which... Japan it was called Super Fun Happy Xenomorph. <laughs> Hentai. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Aliens 4. Yes. She, I, I found this website, uh, this article, where it talked about who got the paid the most words per minute. So oh, in terms alien- of how many lines of dialogue, because she doesn't, because she's an alien hybrid in that, so yeah, she doesn't speak as much. Yeah. So she got eleven million dollars, which means she got twenty three thousand one hundred twenty eight dollars per word wow. for that movie. Wow, 
Wow. Which is pretty incredible. Look, if if that has other mo- if that website has other movies on it, not just that movie, we should do an episode on that. I would I love to don't. just just run out some numbers. I'm that happy would be to great. Do that. Mm-hmm. Talk about Harrison Ford. Oh, also uh, Ghostbusters. I'm sure. I don't know if you have that there, but I'm sure she was. Oh, I could in and out talk- with a bunch of. Ghostbusters. I could have talked about all of everybody yeah, yeah. from Ghostbusters. Mm. But mostly Bill Murray. I think everyone else is just like, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. We said we'd do it. We'll do it right now. I'm putting the suit on. (laughs) I've been wearing the suit for weeks. (laughs) It's just under my regular clothes. Mm. Uh, Harrison Ford. Which is also a (laughs) set of overalls. (laughs) But they're just my regular overalls. So for Star Wars The Force Awakens, Mm -hmm. uh, actually just to take it back a bit, he got $10,000 for A New Hope, but apparently also a quarter percent cut of that movie, which ended up being $2 oh, of million. Course. Dollars. That's wild. Because he was he has a small role in American Graffiti, right? He does. And and originally Lucas was like, I'm not going to yeah. I'm not gonna cast him because I don't want to repeat castings or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I think also he was at that point, like he was going to break big or was suspected right, that he was okay, gonna, sure, And that's sure. why he got that deal. Mm. He got $100,000 for Empire. Which he also got a quarter percent cut for. So he got one. Does that include merchandise? I don't know about that, but I know he got one point four for that. Sorry, one point five million if you calculate it, and he got five hundred thousand for Jedi, and then quarter percent cut of that, which is one point six. Right now, for the new trilogy, for the first Mm. one he was in, he actually decided to come back before Mark Hamill, and then Mark Hamill was like, "Well, fuck, I have to do it now." Right, sure. Harrison Ford is doing Mm. it. So he got paid $20 million for The Force Awakens plus a half a percent of the profits, Whoa. which ended up being $27 million. Wow. Now, I genuinely think he put his heart into it. Sure. Uh-huh. But he doesn't give a shit about Star no. Wars. Like that is, uh, that is, which is fine, which is very yeah. evident. Here's the dichotomy if he doesn't care about Star Wars, but he's going to put in a good performance if you... If you make him. Well, if you make him, sure, yeah. But he's not going to – If you break his leg. He feels like a guy who's not going to embarrass himself on screen. Like he's not no. going to be like – he's not. He's, he doesn't He doesn't want, he doesn't want uh, you know, the press to be like, well, it seems like he wasn't, he didn't put in any effort there. Yeah, he, he, really felt, he really felt like he gave it his all. Hmm. I will also say if we're talking pure money, like monetary reasons, he did the rise of Skywalker. Yes. He's seen, which would have been not very much, I'd imagine, maybe mm-hmm. a million. But that was like – that was 100% money. <laughs> yeah, right, right, sure. I don't think he shaved or had a haircut. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think his jacket was on backwards. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, yeah, God bless him. Here's a very interesting one. This is Robin Williams for the role of Aladdin. Sorry, oh, of course, sorry, yeah. for the role of the genie in Aladdin. Right, sure, sure, I sure. am fading fast, but right. I am Well, that's all right because you only have 40 more of these to go. So <laughs> how, many do, how many more do you have? Uh, I've got two, three. Um... Is it two or is it three? Well, we did Daniel Craig. Great. Because I moved it up. Great. So he recorded 30 hours of scripted and improv lines for Aladdin. First of all. <laughs> I'm Jack Nicholson. <laughs> uh, R.I.P. Because he wanted to leave something wonderful behind for his kids. Mm. Now, as a result of this, he was paid $75,000. Normally, he asks for $8 million. That mm. was his asking price at yeah, this right. time. He's a big star. Yeah, you know, yeah, he was. But in exchange, didn't he say something like? Yes. He, he had some stipulations about not overly commercializing the character, yeah, right? At all. So Robin Williams stipulated that this pay cut was ex- in exchange for his voice not being included on the Aladdin merchandise, right. which they immediately broke. Ah. Uh, so he agreed that. Oh, oh, oh I'm Jack Nicholson. <laughs> That's, That's a handgun. Oh, it's a Latin <laughs> themed handgun. Oh, really? Not for the Joker? They just went, um, yeah. we'll do it for the Batman merch. We'll get wrong yeah. um, he agreed. <laughs> So he agreed to the deal. And then when the movie turned out to be a big hit, oh, sorry, they, then Disney said, was mm-hmm. it Michael Eisner? I can't remember. Somebody terrible was in charge yeah. of Disney said, he agreed to the deal. And then when the movie turned out to be a big hit, he didn't like the deal he had made. Which mm. is not true because yeah, right. because apparently then they sent the actor an apology in the form of a Pablo Picasso painting estimated at the time to be worth one million. Wow! So it was a self portrait of, of the artist as Vincent Van Gogh. Pick a lane, mate. What the fuck is that? Right? Um, which apparently grow up, Picasso. <laughs> which grow up, mate. <laughs> which apparently uh, Robert Rubb said uh, clashed with his Wilder home decor. Oh, now here's the thing. Dan Castanello, yes, Homer Simpson. Mm-hmm, sure, he voced the genie in Aladdin too. Right, directed DVD. Mm. But Robin Williams actually was then approached for the role of the genie in Aladdin Three, mm. which was also direct. It's not DVD; it's VHS. You know it's, what I'm saying? It was a nice. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and he was offered 
not only an apology from John Roth from mm-hmm. Disney for the breach of the agreement, uh-huh. but also $1 million. Mm-hmm. They also took his lines and threw out. They'd already got Dan Castellanello, Homer oh, yeah, Simpson, sure, to sure, do sure. it already. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think also did it in the TV show yeah, yeah. and just threw them out. They threw them out in front of Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Mm. And you give us the money that we gave you. Yes. <laughs> give us it back. We're putting you in the grinder with all the toys. <laughs> Uh, this is a pretty short one, but Natalie Portman is Jane Foster. I don't know what she got paid for the original Thor, but Chris Hemsworth, oh, we talked about this earlier, he got paid between 150000 to 220000 mm. I would say she probably got more. Yeah. Because she was famous mm. at the time. She'd done V Fendena, obviously Star Wars. She was like a prestige actor as well. Did she, Black Swan, or was that afterwards? Black Swan was around then, yeah, I'm yeah, guessing, yeah. 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 Um, apparently, though, for Love and Thunder... It's estimated, we don't know the hard numbers, it was between $1 and $1.2 million. That seems Which low. I don't think it's Because Hemsworth would have got right? like $20 million. Yeah, exactly. And this is a, like, this is a very, like, there's a lot of, there would have been a lot of wire work. Work and work out a work lot. Work out and, yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. That's that's an estimated I one, think, I should. Maybe, I mean, maybe she did it for fun. Maybe she did it I, for maybe, fun. Maybe she, I mean, it also wouldn't shock me if there are like, Actors out there who are just like, yeah, I charge a million dollars a movie, whatever yeah. it is. I just like to do it for fun yeah, or whatever. Or I've, you know, I've paid for my house and yeah. I don't need anything else. And, and a million, a million dollars for a couple of months' work is actually a lot of money. I don't know if anybody knows that. Well, it depends on how hard you're working. You know, <laughs> it's true. Yes, that's what I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe you know, maybe a lot of people are like twenty million dollars too much. Yeah, you know? maybe. Let's. But then again, they're not. The studio is not going to give that money to the poor, are they? No, they're going to give it to some Hemsworths. Yeah. Some, <laughs> some prick. <laughs> uh, let's end on Ben Affleck. Okay, great. He got apparently paid between ten and twenty million dollars for Batman v Superman, okay. which makes sense. He was a hot and rising star hot at the time. Ticket. Ben he Affleck. Was, he was. He was big and back at the time, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. Uh, he was. He'd cleaned up his act. True. He was wasn't pro- as greasy. Not quite. Or he, was he? He was greasy in a different way. He had a big back tattoo. Mm, oh, that's right. Uh, he probably got around the same for Justice League, right. which was then released twice. Uh-huh. And then he agreed to appear in the Snyder Cut, mm-hmm. and then he disappeared forever, except now he's back. And he's married to I don't to have Jennifer, any numbers. Uh, uh, Lopez, Lopez again. Lopez, yeah. He's, he's peak <laughs> early 2000s yes. Ben Affleck. He's doing but he's remained movies. his present day oiliness. He certainly has, and his shininess—the shininess of his suits—is at the minimum. I would be very curious to know to what he's doing and what he's getting paid for. Because we don't know. What are you point. doing? Ben How Arthur? much money you got? Yeah, yeah. Oh, show us your wallet now. What's in your wallet? Do you think what are you... rich people have in their wallets? They have cash. It would be a black card. Mason. Oh, it would be a black card, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and you look at the petrol price, and you just go, "I don't even care." That's right. And then you'd get a servant to fill up your car, mm, and then you crash right. it and do a cartwheel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, also, the the black card is so black that if you're a, if you're not a celebrity, you look into it, you go blind. <laughs> only celebrities, only celebrities can 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 they can conceive of how much money it's worth. What about podcasters? No. What about like Marin? No, Marin couldn't look at it. I don't think. No, absolutely. He not. was in. Um, he was in the Nice Guys. He was the snake. The Good Guys. He was a snake. Yes, sure, okay, <laughs> great. He was a snake. I saw League of Super Pets. He's Lex Luthor in that. Ben Affleck. You just said he made like $40 million for two movies. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's you know, isn't he? The black hole is, the, the, card, the black card is a vortex of death is what I'm saying, James. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, I thought this might be interesting for future reference. Mm-hmm. Here's some actors who have said before that they're not going to return to a role. Oh. Arnold's, we should make a video about it and just list them all yeah, and true. leave it on the internet and when people, when these actors change their minds, we can get yelled at. <laughs> I would love that. Um, Arnold said for the Predator multiple times. Yes, that's right. Though he's nearly come back a few times. We've talked about it. He nearly came mm. back for AVP for a cameo. He nearly he, came back for the Predator. Yep, that's right. He nearly up. Uh, he's he's also returned as Dutch in video games. Oh yeah, of more course. recently. Mm. Uh, Johnny Depp said he's not going to do another Pirates movie. Mm. I don't think they're going to ask him to do a Pirates movie. Yeah. Um, also, stop making Pirates movies. <laughs> they're bad. Or wait a bit and oh find, yeah, and then just make a bunch of them. Make make a bunch or make a good one. I it's also just think, that easy, folks. Just make a good one again. Yeah. Remember the first one was good? Make that one again, but a bit different, obviously. Yeah. Do it like Never Say Never Again. Yeah. Do it like that. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely not rule out him coming back. Yes. But they need some distance. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Neve Campbell is not returning for the latest Scream. Oh. Scream? Scream, Queen. On the screen. Are you okay? No. You're... But uh, apparently not getting paid enough. <laughs> right. Okay. 
Um, I haven't seen the most recent one, so. It's good. Okay. Keanu Reeves Ooh. turned down Speed 2. Ooh. But I would love Speed a, 2 Speed Control. Uh, I, he turned down $12 million. James, should, Speed 2 Speed Control. Shut up. And <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing I do, <laughs> I but for the actual movie that it was named Yeah, for. it was, it was yeah. called Cruise Control. That's was it called correct. Speed? Did you say Speed 2 Speed yes. Control? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. You just say, it like, doesn't matter. Just stop, Mason. <laughs> doing um he turned out 12 million for speed two speed control wow i think they should do speed three the speed control is the accelerator okay, that's, okay yeah it would be wouldn't it <laughs> not a thing like on a train you do maybe the, the, sure. do the speed handle oh yeah what do you got on the tram what are pedals you pedals really <laughs> yeah fascinating stuff mm. um speed 12 million was that his going rate at the time it must have been well speed mm. was big yeah speed, and he read it and he was like i can't do this it's bad and he was oh, yeah. right it was right but again Sandra Bullock, Keanu Reeves, Speed 3, please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not? Uh, Will Ferrell was like, I won't do Alf, it's weird. I'm old and I don't want to – Okay. People will hate me if I do it. What, uh, if I can, If we can go back briefly, what's what's the plot of Speed 3 if Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock are in it? How are they How are they back in the same place? In this, like what's speeding at this point? It's a bus. They just do it again. Okay. Let's make the same movie again. <laughs> oh, they're on the bus to the old folks The same home. bus. No. Yeah. It's the same bus. Okay. And Sandra Bullock is going to work or whatever. Okay, great. And she gets on the bus and she realizes it's the same bus from the first movie. They've reassembled it. Wow. Who? <laughs> Dennis Hopper? Yeah. The late Dennis Hopper? Dennis Hopper. Okay, He's great. He's back. They've deep faked him. Okay. Using the Bruce Willis technology. Okay. And so he looks Jones, like Bruce Willis. <laughs> James Earl Jones' voice. But he's wearing a t shirt that says, Imagine yeah. I'm Dennis Hopper. And I don't have James Earl Jones' voice. Yeah. Because right. they just, what celebrities can they get? You know what I mean? It's true. Oh, just a weird Frankenstein <laughs> amalgam of celebrities. <laughs> yep. Whoever they can get becomes the Whoever new. Whoever they can they're get. They're like, okay, we've got, we're going to have the, we're going to have the greediness of Bruce Willis. We're going to have the deep voice of James Earl Jones. And we're going to yeah. we'll put Carrot Top in there or whatever. And then it's just, these are our new gods. <laughs> These monsters. We, la- we, we laugh and we jest and we jape. Mm. This is going to happen. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. going to merge two actors or be like, what if Marilyn Monroe and James... Marilyn Manson. Yeah, and Ma- Marilyn Manson had a child and this yeah. is what that actor would look yeah, like. A true. digital baby that's going to become yeah. a movie star or whatever. Mm. Yeah. And just screams. <laughs> even as an adult. Ah! Shouldn't have given it consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> This is too late and too long. Oh. What is the actual time? Because it's daylight savings. It's 11.27. Fucking hell, Mason. All right, let's wrap this up then, Joe. That's it. Okay, terrific. I enjoyed that, though. I did as well, yeah. Uh, I, I, think think we, I think we learned. We were like, what are we going to talk about this week? And then I suggested this, and we were like, is this enough? This was too much. Too much. I did too much research. Too much stuff. Well, James, should we go on to the next segment? I agree. Which is what we read in. Yep. What are we going to read? That's the perfect opportunity for me to actually play the theme song to that. Nice. Should I do that now? Yeah, do it. I'll do it. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> we said we weren't going to do late ones anymore, Mason. It's true. <laughs> Look what's happened to us. Mm. I'm having uh, a great time, though, let me tell you. Great. I just want to do a shout-out, Mason, if you Go don't on. mind. Uh, this is actually – this comes via my brother, the one you do like. Is it, though? Yes, Mason. Oh, yeah, it is too. Because he happens to know this person. I want to give a shout-out, Mason, Mm -hmm. to Harry and the Internet Squad, who are over on their own YouTube channel, if you can Uh believe such a thing, called The Internet Squad. Now, this is a YouTube channel where they're doing reviews. They're doing skits. They're doing Lego (laughs) stuff. What you saw, Mason, before, you said we'll only give them the shout-out if they send you the Optimus Prime Lego. That's correct, That yes. they actually have, which we see on this very YouTube channel. <laughs> so I just wanted to say a shout-out, say hello. I said to my brother, because <laughs> he he said this a while back, and I'm like, I'll definitely do that, and then I didn't write it down. So now I've written it down. And then I'm like, is it his birthday? And he's like, I don't I don't think so or whatever. But maybe it's his birthday, Harry. <laughs> and happy birthday if it's your birthday. Got to be eventually, doesn't and it? And everybody over at the Internet Squad. Wow, so wow, I appreciate wow. you listening. That's true. Uh, good, good work on all the things that you're doing. Never stop making Internet content because if you do, somebody else will make Internet content. That's right. And I cannot abide that. How dare they? Then send Mason the Optimus Prime If as you well. could, I would yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something we both watched is we both watched the first episode of Finding Jesus, which we teased oh last my goodness, week. Mason. Boy, did we. But it's, uh, I, we mentioned it last time, but it's uh, our friends Alexi and Cam who are, they're always out there solving mysteries. They are. Uh, but the, this time they're attempting to solve the mystery of, uh, of a weird video game that appeared many years ago. Uh, it's a Kanye West video game that may be the, 
the uh, introduction of people to a cult. Yes. And it's a very funny – what I said, like this is like one of those kind of serial shows except it's a real it's a real investigation and it's also funny. Yeah. Like it's not it's not a – You're not going to find like a body in, 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 a, in a bin at the end or whatever. Mm, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, or maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but it's good fun stuff yeah. and also really – like it's an actual detective – yeah. narrative that they weave mm. it's there's two podcasts and they're just two funny guys yeah. they're just like again i've said of these guys like i listen to them read the phone book like they could make that funny. have you actually so, done that though no mm. no Didn't probably you? a waste of their time actually yeah, well you know, <laughs> yeah if this goes bad maybe you could propose this okay great an opportunity for them perhaps. yeah that's right uh yeah so the first the second episode will be up by now on the mm. youtube channel grouse house grouse house that's if right if you want to check it out it's well worth checking out Here's something that I've been listening to, Mason. Go on. My wife interviewed, uh, my wife Claire, mm-hmm. uh, interviewed Jane Harper on her podcast, Taunts. And you might oh, be like, author, sure. that sounds familiar. Jane Harper, did she write the book The Dry, the smash hit book The Dry, which was <laughs> adapted into a movie by Eric Banner? Yes. Correct. That's the very same. Whoa. I'm making my way through it, but then I had to pause to do this stupid podcast. Uh-huh. It's great. If you think, if you're a writer or a budding writer, if you're interested in writing, it takes like, she talks about all the like the steps that she took mm. to to write the book. Like she did it the kind of late in her life, and then she had kids, and she like the whole. That's it's really interesting, mm. and like how that ended up happening, like You're with right. Eric Banner and all of that. Mm. And it's just really interesting, and I find the process in which she wrote it like really fascinating. Mm. And like if you're thinking like how can I write a book or whatever, what's the steps? Mm-hmm. It's really good and well worth uh, listening to this interview. My wife, her uh, podcast taunts. It's an awesome review show, and I'm not just saying that because she made me, and she's standing behind Mason. She's holding a rolling pin. Uh, she's behind me, isn't she? <laughs> Mason, I just said the joke, like, and then you said, yeah, but the I same did it. In the, I did it in the way that people like it. Oh, the, okay, the, the, like in the, the pop culture, the commercially way. acceptable way to like it. All yeah, right, all right, it. fine. Uh, I've also started listening. To, uh, I've also started reading rather a comic book uh, that has been recommended to me a bunch of times. Uh, written by Charles Sewell and illustrated by Ryan Brown. It's called Eight Billion Genies. Oh, I, I bought this. that, but I haven't read it yet. But uh, well, then you would know. It's a, it's about it's a. It's a world in which at exactly the same moment everybody on earth gets a genie and they all get one wish and everybody just wishes for whatever. Yeah. And it's mayhem. Uh, and it's uh, it's really, really good fun. Does everybody wish at the same time as some people hold on to their genie for a bit longer? Yes. Is the answer to that? That's right, yes. Great. Yeah. but um, I'm going to read that because I've started, I bought it as mentioned. Yeah, yeah. But that's uh, very good. And um, yeah, just a, just a good. Is it the same looking genie? Or has everyone got a different looking genie? Uh, they 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 all have like the same kind of like archetype. So it's like this uh, kind of like okay. I don't even know how to describe it. Sort of like an impish kind of character. Yeah, 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 but they're yeah. kind of like different colors. Yeah, they're, they're like just disti- no, they're, yeah, and they're all like just dis- have like distinctive facial features. Like they little, free them and stuff. Like a little mustache or what have you. They free them and stuff. They let you free. I wish you to be free. Oh, not so far. Ooh. Mm. How many issues has that been already? There's four, I think. Although there's really... a lot of bloody issues, though. You know what I mean? Oh. Going on. Uh, uh, and also, uh, Human Target is back, which is one of my favorite DC. The show they brought it back. No, I they didn't that was bring two it. Seasons no, they, they would, no, they would never bring that back. Um, okay. But the the comic book by um, Tom King. Great. Yes. Should we move on to the next segment of the show? We should move on to the next segment, which is called What We. No, it's not. It's called Letters. It is, isn't it? It's called Letters, and I know this because I have a theme, a letters theme that I play from my phone, and it goes like this. Could you recommend it? Classic one was the letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. This is a very special segment of the show. Oh, yes? Yeah, Mason. It's where right. we read letters that people send in. Uh, for example, a letter might be a Gmail sent to you at weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. That's correct. Or it might be a hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter, which I sc- Gowl at. I go, what's this? Oh, yes. And then I read it out on the show. you're mad at social media. I am mad at social media. Mm. Some people spend too much time on their phones. And by some people, I mean me. Oh, My yeah. brain is broken. Mason. <laughs> yes. What are you doing? Here's an email. <laughs> this is from Salam. It says, hey, James and Mason. I hope you guys are doing well. So I just listened to your podcast about Andor and you talked about the hammer gong person and how they couldn't, they could get a droid to do it but you're glad they don't. And so am I because it just wouldn't be the same. Yeah. I say this because I work in an office and at work every Friday, one of my colleagues announces across the office for everyone to hear, it's five o'clock and it just doesn't feel like the start of the weekend without it. <laughs> anyway, look forward to your podcast and carry on garbage. Hope you guys do this for as long as you can from Salam. P.S. One Friday, she was working from home and she emailed everyone at the office, it's five o'clock. Nice. Yeah, right? Quick question, Mason. Go on. Are you loving Andor? Yes. Season four? Cool. Mm. 
awesome. Yeah. And was there a question within that email for us? No, but I just I just like the idea of someone who's <laughs> who's decided that their personality is telling people when it's Friday because you're sort of. It's you know what it is. It's stolen valor because this person has nothing to do with with it being the weekend. That's true. And but everyone's like, just, yeah, yeah, you're right. But she's just like, hey, everybody, it's the weekend. And everybody goes, hooray! It, that's good, and you're good for pointing it out. Oh, fuck that. You yeah. should take over. And yes. Oh, you should, shouldn't he? Yeah. My thing now. Yeah. Wait till the person's about to open the mouth and just be like, and have but have a megaphone. Yeah. <laughs> like it's five o'clock. That's folks. right. People love that actually. Yeah. yeah. Or you could go. It's four fifty-five. I'm leaving early. Yeah. 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 But then you get fired. Yeah, well, it is yeah, what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. When are we going to see the big drum guy in Andor again? It's a great question. I'm up to episode four like everybody else now, like a pleb. Mm-hmm. God damn it. That's right. Anyway, Werewolf by Night this next week. Though, That's mate, right. So we're going to get into. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a tweet that I got from Ninja Dude 3 Oh. It says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. What is your favorite super slash villain origin story? Oof. Mm. Now, there's a lot of like – Person was bit by a whatever yeah, yeah. or fell into a whatever. Look, I like – I'm a big fan. Off the top of my head, I'm a big fan of Dr. Dooms because his origin basically is that an experiment went awry and he got a little, like, cut on his face and then he's like, I'm ruined. I'm, I'm ruined. I'm, I'm so ugly now. And then he, he got a big metal mask made. He should have worn – used Harry's shavers. And then Precisely. And himself, Mason. And then he put the mask on before it, before it had cooled down. Yeah. And then it just burned his entire head off. And now he's like, Richards, Re- you did this, Reed Richards. And I'm like, nah, man. Why is he so dumb? There should be a guy who's just like, nah, man. Nah, man. Yeah. Nah. Maybe like one of his – Hey, man. Nah. Yeah. See, see – but nobody could because he has like vast technological. Yeah, you shoot you with a laser and, and, and you know technological weapons and stuff, and he's got magic and stuff. But he needs a guy from like as part of his entourage, like a guy from back from his old neighborhood, like turtle. Can, yeah, yeah, he needs a turtle who can just, which is ironic because he's the one in the in the, in the metal it's suit, the shell and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But he needs just a guy back from his old neighborhood in Latveria who's like, nah, oh, man. Yeah. You you come on, man. I know you. Yeah. And this is weird. That's right. Anyway, we run this town. We literally run this town of Latveria because <laughs> you're a dictator and that's cool. Um, I don't know, Superman. Didn't you say super villain? Superhero, a favorite superhero or villain. Oh, either. that's handy. I think it's not so, doesn't necessarily have to be like the act itself of yeah, like yeah, yeah. Spider Man is bitten by a spider, Superman's from space. But it's not just <laughs> that. Yes. Like, I, I watched the League of Super Pets, which I'll probably talk oh, about yes. another week. But at the start, they do the Superman leaves Earth. Yes. And it always gets me. So I was like, this is fucked up. Like, right, he's okay. leaving his family. He's leaving his job. This is fucked, I said. I stood up. <laughs> I was... And same with Spider-Man, like, you know, with his uncle gets shot and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's again, it's not the act. It's like, it's the stuff that happens around it. Yes. And, which brings meaning to it. Mm. So I think, you know, the or- an origin can be dumb. Yeah. But it can. It can, can be a fall in a vat of toxic waste. Yeah, exactly. But if you fell in the vat of toxic waste because you're trying to provide for your family and they love a big hot bowl of toxic waste and you were just trying to get some toxic waste, but then you fell in the toxic waste. Maybe next time bring a bucket. Bring a bucket on a string or something. Yeah. yeah. But not a plastic bucket. That it burned through with the toxic waste, I think. Yeah, even and like the string would probably be you probably want to go with the like a like a chain even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A metal chain. Mm. Yeah. That's oh, you know what I also saw? Because just randomly on YouTube, I saw a clip from Stargirl, which is not a show that I watch. Yeah. But it there's a there's a but it is on, isn't it? It is definitely on. We can get it. But mm. there's a. There, I saw a clip, and it's Joel McHale, who is the TV version of Starman, who's in it. He's he was presumed dead. He's back now, I think. Thank but God. it's just him. It's him fighting a couple of people, like some super criminals, in a convenience store, and it's really good. Okay, like the action is good. The though, action right? is like you know that expression. They didn't have to go as hard, but they did. Yeah, it's that. It's like there's some like there's some amazing like fight choreography and like some great moves and stuff. And I'm like, is this enough for me to watch this show? Probably not, but wow. But imagine if you did. <laughs> yeah, it was the cool. On the table. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm. I haven't heard bad things about yeah, it, right. so yeah, mm. maybe I will watch that, mm. or maybe I'll do this. It's from Orion who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Ooh. Hey, James, if you really want another veto, you could argue that Meso did not provide one bit of news for the entire month he took off, and therefore you are entitled to a veto. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Now, I'm like, great idea, mm. but also, if we're banking vetoes, yeah. a, if we're banking users, sometimes you'll bring one or two bits of news. That's true. And that would mean you would get ahead. Mm. So I think if I go down this road, yeah. we're going to be starting a tallying system. Exactly. There's going right. to be research involved. Mm. Um, there'll be a 
this fist fight, not with us, with the audience, mm. you know, because people will pick factions and That's whatever. That's true, yeah. I don't want a civil war, Mason, uh, within the comments. What about this, James? Civil war babies. Okay, so everyone's a baby. Yes. What about? But I'm talking the American Civil War. Oh, okay, yeah. but everyone's a baby. What mm, about correct. this comment on uh, YouTube? Go on. They're making Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Very nice. What do you think of that? I loved it. Uh, here's an email from Leo. Good day, James and May. So apparently today is International Podcast Day, so I thought this was a perfect time to express my gratitude. I'm currently 16 going on 17 years old, and I've been a loyal weekly wackadoo. Like the song! The loyal week is it? Okay. A loyal weekly wackadoo since I was 10. Every day oh on the bus God. ride to school, I'd listen to the pod while dealing with, anno- with annoying classmates and some not-so-good car sickness. I just wanted to thank you guys for making my entire middle school and high school life a whole lot better. I also wanted to ask if I can be the official guy who started listening way too young of the pod. Yeah. Have a good one, Leo from Chicago. My goodness, Yes, Leo. you may. Absolutely. Uh, you should get some um, anti-nausea medication for that. Um, oh, yeah? We keep it in the car. Family so car. they should just go to your car. I mean, Get it no, out. we need those. So just but break like, the window of James's car. A, and you have it probably about half an hour before you take a public transport. Mm. It will help you. It will help you with okay. that nausea. Don't even a bit worry of ginger? about it. ginger? Yeah, I've heard that. Mm. I've heard that. But if you want something that's not some homeopathic nonsense, sure. Then uh, no, I also okay. believe in things. Claire. Well, if you want, if Mason, you want, if you fucking know. it is late. I was thinking Claire because she's always like, have this weird mushroom have some witch drink hazel because you'll have a. You have a cold. And I'm mm. like, can't I just ride this out like a normal person? Can I just Claire? do some vomits? Can I just Claire? do big vomits? Just let me do vomits, Claire. Stand I'm back. a man. Let me let me do my manly vomits, Claire. I got a comment here that says, um, Hugh Jackman is done with X-Men. Are you sure about that? What about this one? Well, that comment didn't age well, did it? Oh. What about this one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, well, that comment doing? just happened, didn't it? <laughs> what else, Mason? Uh, here's just one more. Here's from Tanner. Yep. Hello, James, Maso, Claire, and all the others that make this podcast possible. Yeah. Hello. That's it, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Robert just Collings s- who yeah, edits. That's right. And all the social medias, Mason. Ah! It's the whole team. Just wanted to say thank you for everything you guys do for the listeners. It's been a hard month. Uh, I know this is nothing compared to... Oh, there's there's, there's some bad times. Oh. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, his dad is moving out due to his parents separating... Our forever home will probably be on the market sometime this year. I'm trying to balance a work, school, social life on top of it all. I know this is nothing compared to some people, but knowing that you boys will be there on Monday morning on my commute to university and again at some point in the week for Caravan and Garbage, a third time on Thursday suggestible. Oh, hello. Just brings some extra light into my life. Uh, Thank you once more. You're great, and I appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, There is one bit of silver lining there, and that is that you got us in the divorce. That's so don't true. Even yeah, worry about it. We're yeah, coming yeah. with you. We made sure of it. Yes. Oh, no, we're sorry about that. That sucks. That's, yeah, uh, that's, that's terrible. Uh, news. Uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm. But folks, that's the whole show. It is, isn't it? What do you it? think about that? I think it's good. Not the divorce. That's bad. And I'm, no, that yeah, was I'm bad. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. That yeah, sucks. Yeah. That's bad news. That's right. <laughs> We both agree that's bad, though. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, folks, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for telling your friends about the show. Uh, thank you for subscribing and liking and posting about it on social media and doing all that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, thank you to the um, uh, voters at Ranker.com who ranked us as the second best podcast about movies. Did you know that? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, ahead of How Did This Get Made, but the, below something else. <laughs> oh, the um, no, that's the one that I went on that time. Oh, nice. I've been there a few times. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fr- Lights, friends camera. of the show. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Uh, how so, to get this made is an amazing podcast, right? by the way. How do That's we do ridiculous. that? That doesn't even make yeah, any sense. We've, we've, also, we've gamed the system. Were we supposed again. to promote this or something? I First I've heard of it, <laughs> honestly. Um, but, folks, thank you for so much. Uh, thank you uh, for telling your friends about it because that's how we get uh, more listeners. And thank you for leaving five-star reviews because, uh, once again, uh, we get, you, put the, you put the five-star reviews in, the algorithms tell other people yeah. to give it a listen. That's James, right. James, you got your reviews there? I just want to say I don't think we spend enough time on the divorce email and we spent too much time riffing on other garbage this episode. Sure. And I think that – that is a dub. Sorry that that happened again. I'm sorry okay. to come back to it. We appreciate you and we appreciate your you writing. You think there it. should have been 40 minutes of divorce material? I think we, well, not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that's – you know, I, we, mm. I appreciate people reaching out. I'm glad okay. that we can make a minor difference in somebody's mm. life is what I'm saying. And when you're like, ah, this is a problem that's not – you know, it's compared to other people's problems, it's all relative, man. And that's mm. the thing that's happening to you which is not great. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's people dying in floods, but they'll be – you know, they'll forget yeah, about it. Yeah, that's right. Because they'll be dead. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, you know what would help is some five-star reviews. Somebody Got it been... right here, Mason. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. You can do this in-app or at ranker.com apparently. Yeah. Uh, a shrekingly good time. There's a five-star review from It's Zenith who says, this is the first podcast I ever subscribed to around mid-2016 and I've never missed an episode. The two boys, James and Mason, have great chemistry and never fail to keep me entertained. Truly one of the best. And this is one is from the Cheek Drilla. 
Nice. Five stars also. Just in app. You can do it in any app. Crazy. Best Australian comic book people I've ever heard. Some of the best chemistry between two mates I've ever heard. Always screaming and shouting. <laughs> Love that it. That is true. And that is that's camaraderie. Some extra That's and shout this week. Yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, folks, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go over to the uh, Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod at subreddit and Discord. If you want to follow any of us, you can follow uh, first and foremost our friend Rob Collins, who edits this podcast, edits all kinds of videos, does social media, does all kinds of things. He's at Raw Collins. Correct. He's correct. also at the Weekly Planet. That's the place you should follow if you want to know all sorts of Weekly Planet goings on. You can yeah. also follow me at. Uh, uh, Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and Nick Mesa on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies, chuck in a buck or any man you would not miss. We would love that. If you're a big time rich, richy rich, uh, you can go, if, you, if you're earning that $20 million per picture, we know, you, we know you're listening. And you got that black card. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you can bear to look at the void of your black card, put it into bigsandwich.co uh, for nine US dollars per month. You get all sorts of bonus podcasts and early videos. And movie commentary. Hells yes. Uh, we've got T-shirts on tpublic.com if you search for The Weekly Planet. Thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Rack and Perillo musical themes. Next week, uh, we're talking about Werewolf by Night. Can't wait. Also, She-Hulk will be wrapping up. Last episode of She-Hulk. I think. Is it? I think so. All right, then. Is it eight? I thought there was more than that. Maybe there's, maybe there's eight. She-Hulk. List of episodes. Webisodes? List of webisodes. I hope they don't put Deadpool in it. No, there's nine. So I don't think, on the... James, I don't think they'll put Deadpool in it. Shut up, Mason. <laughs> they might. They might, though. It's true. Um, that would be honestly, that would be a perfect team up. Yes, I agree. Uh, episode eight is this week, and then it's episode nine the following. Oh, then we won't talk about it. We'll talk no. about other things, but we'll certainly talk about Werewolf by Night. So get that oh, in your God. bloody. Should we do a YouTube review? I just like you know how I love comments. Yes. Just imagine those. These, comments. James, are you still reading those comments? No, Mason. Okay. If anything, you're reading them. <laughs> This is your fault, by the way. Why? Because you said he wasn't coming back. Yeah, but I did it for engagement. Well, that did work. And comments and such. I wish you'd get and engaged I'll do it again. to a rock at the bottom of the ocean. Like SpongeBob? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What's next? That, that's everything. Oh, good. Yeah. Grab that uh, jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. That's a good show. Bye. Goodbye. I had a good time. I did. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs>